Game of Microphones is brought to you by CMG Podcasts. What you was been? I executed men who disobeyed me. You've also spared men. Thousands of wildlings when they refused to nail. I wasn't a king. But you were. You've always been. I gave up my crown, Sam. I bent the knee. I'm not king in the north anymore. I'm not talking about the king in the north. I'm talking about the king of the bloody seven kingdoms. Your mother was Lyanna Stark. And your father, your real father, was Rhaegar Targaryen. You've never been a bastard. You are Aegon Targaryen, true heir to the Iron Throne. And now, from the crypts of Winterfell, It's your favorite podcast of Thrones, Game of Microphones, with Sir Duncan and Lady Rachel. Winter is here. Well met, freezing southerners and stubborn northerners, and welcome to Game of Microphones. I'm Lord Sterling, Sir Duncan, Lord of Castle Sterling by the Sea. And I'm Lady Rachel of House Fox, the Obsessed. <laughs> and this is episode 110. Joining us today is a special guest, Lord Matt of House Christensen, champion of liberty. Thanks so much for joining us today, Matt. I was wondering if you prepared a title or not. Thank you, because <laughs> I, di- I didn't have one on the spot. I thought, oh crap, I'm going to have to invent one. I figured Thanks I'd come for up with something for you just in case. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming here today, man. Sure, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So you've got your own sig- pretty significant YouTube and podcasting presence as well. Where can people find your work? Yeah, uh, I do solo YouTube videos twice a week. I do uh, a, a political, current events, pop culture podcast on uh, Sunday nights, live on YouTube as well. It's all at uh, mattchristensenmedia.com. Last name is long, but it's Christian, like the religion, S-E-N. Mattchristensenmedia.com. Yep. You can find it all there. Perfect. Nice. On this episode of our season eight watch, we're covering the Game of Thrones season eight premiere, Winterfell. And in case you're not already aware, this podcast is from the perspective of someone who's current on the show. That means you've seen up through season eight, episode one. If not, there's still time to be nailed to a wall and left to die by an undead army, only to be reanimated and burned alive as you attempt to attack your former allies <laughs> so you don't have to hear these spoilers. <laughs> Damn. Warning. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. What'd you guys think? Right. How about you, Matt? I'm a little nervous to discuss because I don't want to be a wet blanket. <laughs> it's um, all good. Honestly, I was mildly disappointed last night, but I understand why they went the direction that they did. That is to say, to me... It was a little too much parade of like, hey, look who's still alive. Hey, remember this conflict? And that was a thing. Remember this? I get it. It's been like two years. <laughs> and and I liked, um, you know, the, I guess the best moments to me were, were how some of those conflicts revealed themselves. Like when Sam speaks with Daenerys, that oh, was really man. cool. Yeah. Oh, man. John, John learning the truth is cool. That said, for the viewer... That's not new information. I like to see the characters learn that, but it's not mm-hmm. new information. If, to me, this felt like a massive setup episode. Definitely. Which I understand given where it fits after a two-year break, start of a season. Got to build the tension and the hype for what's to come. But I, when the credits rolled last night, I was, you know, you had the... You had yet another, oh man, remember these people <laughs> from season one? Yeah. When he pushed them out of the window, that, it cuts right there. I'm thinking like... All right, it's just tension. The whole thing is just tension. And I know the next few episodes 
uh, are going to be awesome. I can tell that all all of these conflicts are going to have to be resolved, I know, right? right? They only have so much time, but that's why I was a little disappointed is because it, it just there what the there wasn't a ton of plot advancement. Sure, yet. you're not the yeah. only one. I feel kind of the same way. Um, I was kind of afraid I was going to be the wet blanket on this mm. podcast today. So <laughs> I'm glad I'm not alone in that. I totally echo. I was. I guess my thing was, is I really wasn't sure what to expect for the first episode. You nailed the so, first scene, though. You, you, you called exactly what happened with the first scene. You predicted the first shot we would get would be, you know, the, the crew arriving at Winterfell. So nailed and that. And boy, was that an incredible scene. Um, I liked, you know, I echo what Matt's saying. I liked the reunions, but I felt that it was just ramping up for an amazing season eight. Mm-hmm. So I... I I think there was so much hype because we've been missing this show for, you know, almost 600 days. And (laughs) I was like wanting the game of Thrones aspect back, but we do need to kind of reacquaint ourselves um, with the characters. So I just feel, I felt a little melancholy, I guess, after. Sure. I feel you. It just sucks that we have a setup episode at a time where we only have six episodes left. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. if it was like the beginning of season four, season five, we get a total setup episode. It wouldn't be a big deal because there's 10 episodes, still a whole series left. Now there's only what, like six, seven episodes or six, seven hours total of the show left. So, yeah. But then again, big things were happening in this episode, like things that I wasn't expecting to happen until like later on in the season, like John riding a dragon, for instance. Oh, my God, that came out of left field for sure. Yeah, I was expecting that to be sort of like a spur of the moment, like Hail Mary attempt to save the day. John is forced to try to mount a dragon. But no, Daenerys just tells him hop right on. I was a little surprised about that, too. Yeah. Again, I was I felt like okay, this is so awesome. We're getting so much dragon content and John's riding a dragon, but it's, I felt like it should come at a more like intense time, not like, oh, hey, let's just go for a joy joy ride on our dragons. (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) It was pretty cool. (laughs) What'd you think about the uh, dragon CGI in this scene, Matt? Well, I didn't realize the significance of it until we watched some of the director commentary. Oh, I didn't get to watch that yet. So, so I'm not well. I guess spoiler oh, alert fine. there, <laughs> but but uh, I'm not I'm not like the biggest Game of Thrones nerd of all time. Like you know, I I enjoy it, but I don't know a lot of the ins and outs. I was not aware that only Targaryens can ride dragons, mm. uh, apparently. So so this was the, sort of the tip off, and the director I forget which one, but he was saying. Uh, th- this is a, a tip or something that should have kind of clued John in prior to the reveal, but John's not and always Danny the quickest always, one. Yeah, so. John knows nothing. <laughs> yeah, he knows nothing. So I, when I was watching the scene, I, that didn't click to me. I didn't think, oh, he should realize that only Targaryens can do this, so right, right. he should take this as a massive clue. But I guess John was in the same position that I was, which is like, I just figured a guy can ride just a dragon if with he it. wants, <laughs> as long as the dragon doesn't eat him or something. It, I don't think it's like I a, that too. Yeah, it's not like a law of nature that only Targaryens can ride dragons, but Targaryens with their Valyrian blood are much more easily accepted as being uh, like allies to dragons. They can like right. smell it. Okay. So, so there there have been instances in history in Westerosi history where other people have mounted dragons. Like I think somebody managed to mount sheep stealer or you know one of these wild dragons in westeros yes a bastard girl named nettles of unknown origin born to a dockside whore somehow managed to mount the dragon sheep stealer a wild dragon that roamed westeros but it typically yeah you're right it's just targaryen so this happened and there were a couple other things like john saying that in the, the towards the end of last season that he doesn't enjoy what he's good at that was referencing how he doesn't like killing even though he has to and mm. it it perfectly mirrored what Barristan the Bold had told Danny about Rhaegar her brother and Jon's father who also was great at killing and sword fighting but just didn't enjoy it wasn't his thing so that there's all these little things that have been happening that'll be clues for Danny as she as the pieces are put it together and Shouldn't she's told this have been like the biggest clue though totally like, this is yeah Rhaegar lets him ride him yeah, so she, like yeah didn't she be kind of on that thought process of okay 
Right. He's riding a if, dragon. If she hasn't figured it out yet, like as far as she knows, she, he's a snow. So there's no reason for anybody to think that he's a Targaryen per That's se. True. But once she hears it and finds out the truth and starts thinking back about all these things that have happened, she's going to realize that all the pieces fit together perfectly. And th- then the question is, will she bend the knee to him? Because he'll be the rightful heir, right? I got to think at least one of them is dead before season <laughs> end. Oh, totally. I agree. I, I, ha- I have to think that happens. But it's one or the other for sure. I, I yeah. have, I'm one of these weird people that kind of hopes like Cersei or someone wins in the end. I, wanna, <laughs> I don't want a feel good ending. I want like some piece of crap. Hurt me. Like, or like the Night King sitting on the throne or yeah. something like that. Something I would, un- yeah. yeah. Something I would not be disappointed by that. Totally disheartening to be yeah. like something dark. That'd be cool. It'd be awesome. It'd be so ballsy, man. Like, no, spoiler yeah. alert, Avengers Infinity War, like end on some like hardcore note like that movie did. That'd be hmm. so cool. Well, that's one of the a million movies that I have never seen because I don't watch any. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big movie guy either. That's We're kind TV. of a gag on our show is like I never know any movie reference that anybody <laughs> ever makes. It's because I'm such a, such a terrible movie watcher, but I do watch Thrones. That's about it. There you go. There you so go. Um, why don't we start out with our with your number three, Matt? Sure. So top, top three moments of the show. Is that yep. the bit? Okay, so the coolest moment for me was uh was definitely the conversation between Daenerys and Samwell. Oh, which nice. I I had actually forgotten. There's there's so many wrinkles and layers. I had actually forgotten that scene. So when I when she when Sam asks about his uh, dad and his brother and she reveals that information, that was actually a reminder to me too and I'm on my couch thinking, right. "Oh, yeah." yeah. Ooh. Dual That's function. That's a little rough. Exposition mixed into dialogue. So, so it's yeah. informing a character and the audience at the same time. Pretty good uh, writing technique there. So that was really cool. That that was the uh the moment that stood out the most to me. The reveal to John towards the end of the episode about the the truth of his uh his lineage. Mm, yeah. um, we all knew it was coming. I, you know, I can't say that it, ex- I can't say that it exceeded or, or failed to live up to my expectations. I thought it was well performed and, and um, I guess it was kind of cool that he learned through Samwell too. You kind of wonder yeah, how is that information going to come to him? And it was kind of nice to see that what is difficult information that he almost seems to deny for the purposes of loyalty or whatever else, loyalty to Ned and loyalty to Daenerys. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. To learn that through a trusted friend, I think was kind of cool. Um, and then third, I actually don't even get this. Maybe you guys can explain it to me, what was going on, but what was this at the wall? What was this like thing of dismembered body parts and the <laughs> screaming oh, the kid? Like, that was yeah. that freaked me out when that thing started screaming and they lit it on fire. Pretty crazy, right? I don't right? even know what was going on there. I don't even so, get it. So that kid was the first kid that we saw in this episode. Seven oh. or eight year old Ned Umber, who was like, he was Umber. clamoring around, climbing up to get a view of Daenerys and Jon as they're arriving. Yeah. Mirror, that was mirroring what Arya did in season one, episode one, right. when King and Robert Brand. was arriving. Yeah, they're all climbing, trying to figure out what's going on. So that kid gets sent north to to come back with his house to Winterfell for safety, but he's intercepted because the the Night King and the army breached the wall at the end of last episode. So now yeah. they've moved down, and that guy's castle, um, Last Hearth, is uh, is the closest castle to the wall. So, oh, was, so that actually wasn't at the wall. Yeah. That was nearby. Yep. So Tormund, okay. Giant Spain, and Beric, and Dolorous Ed, and those guys, they were headed south from the wall to try to retreat to Winterfell. And they're basically chasing the Night King's army who breached gotcha. the wall and are, are causing havoc. So they're coming acro- upon the ruins of the havoc of the army, and they're like, oh my God. So it's super sad that we see that kid running around having a good time at the beginning of the episode, and then he's nailed to the wall at the end. And and yeah. set a blaze. Hopefully, that's the last like a... Ned we see die on Game of Thrones. Oh, he's also <laughs> Ned, the same yeah. name. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I, I believe he was named after Ned Stark, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And these like spiral symbols. Mm. We've seen these symbols from actually the very first pilot episode when the rangers range north of the wall they find the wildling body parts arranged in kind of like this circular um you know symbol with a line down the center of it Um, we also get the spiral pattern at the fist of the first men with the body parts of the horses and then we also get it when um, the night king is created 
Yes, at the weirwood tree, it's a big spiral. Yeah, we get that and overhead then, shot looking down at the tree, and there are these stones, like standing stones lined up in a spiral pattern all the way around okay. the outside of the tree. And they also, these these um, symbols also appear in the dragon glass cave at Dragonstone. And we're, as a viewer, we're really not sure what they represent yet, but we know that they come from the children of the forest and the children of the forest are who created the Night King. So mm. when he said that it's a message from the Night King, we don't necessarily know what that message is yet, but we've seen these symbols before. Yeah. Okay. Man, what a heartbreaking scene when, when Sam learns the truth about his family. I mean, there was no love lost between him and Randall. So he, while he was shocked, I don't think he was necessarily too upset about the death of learning that his father died. Um, but, he, you know, he says, oh, well, at least I'll be back loud back home, you know, now that my brother's Lord. Oh, and, God. Yeah. You know, you think everything's like kind of all right. Well, we know it's not. But uh, she drops the news on him. And, man, what a piece of acting by by um, this actor here. Um, I'm I'm drawing a blank on his name at the moment. But, man, he, this huge frown oh, on him and he's he's and shaking. Like and, lip. Yeah. yeah. It's it's really hard not to to feel sympathy for that character when when watching that scene, um, man. Yeah, what did you guys think about about that scene? I'm just glad that Danny was brave enough to tell him and make that connection right. and be the one to bear the news. I'm surprised that Jorah didn't notice. You know, Jorah knew who he was. Although maybe Sam didn't tell him his last name at the Citadel. Hmm. Not sure. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. I, I don't know. I remember that their conversation at the Citadel was mostly surrounding that um, he was a Night's Watchman and served with, uh, with his father. Right. Yeah. So we learned that, you know, Daenerys is informed that Samwell basically saved her best friend from the Grayscale. And then the situation totally reverses as we learn that Daenerys murdered Sam's family. <laughs> and so she's is, is essentially thanked Samwell for his good deeds by destroying his house. Yeah. Well, Just, at least he gets to keep the sword that he was hoping for a pardon with. Yeah, yeah, true. I was thinking last night, what if Sam ends up being the one who has to kill Daenerys? Because oh. of this? <laughs> <laughs> that is, because I don't know, Sam is always, um, oh, he's always like the unlikely hero or like pulling off unlikely feats, I suppose. Totally. Um, like when he killed the White Walker and stuff like oh, that. Oh, it was so good. Um, he's a self-proclaimed coward, but he really stands up in, in times of need. Yeah. He somehow pulls it together. Uh, and so I just, I, I don't know. I like to think about... I just hope there's some some bizarre twist like that that nobody sees coming uh, in the end of all of this. I just hope it's not predictable. But given how the show has resu has unfolded so far, I doubt it will be. Mm. Uh, have you have you guys heard the? Um, I'm sure you have, given how invested you are in the show. But the theory that Ned Stark is still alive. <laughs> oh, man. Ned is still alive. Yeah. That he was replaced oh, yeah. by no, I've not uh, heard that one. So th the idea here is that uh, that that. You guys might remember better than I than I will. But when Ned was in prison in season one, there was either what's the main the the main guy who's the the many faced guy Jack and Hagar Jack and right. It, I forget if it's him or one of his many faced guys who are in the prison with yeah it was him Ned right. So the question is then why would a many faced guy be, be in, in prison at cells. all unless he wanted to be right? So the idea is that Ned was not actually executed, but somebody many faced into Ned <laughs> and Ned still lives and is going to return. I, I don't know. I want to see something like that. Dude, that would be uh, so crazy. This kind of sounds like my little finger theory. Oh don't yeah. What's that? What's that? So I, um, I've watched the series more times than I care to admit. <laughs> and hmm. over the course of my many rewatches, I started getting this feeling that when Littlefinger is up at Winterfell, he pays a faceless man to take his place in his death. Because oh, we see okay. him hand a girl a coin. It's an iron coin. Yeah. And she whispers to him, if you turn it up super loud or put the subtitles on, she says, your time is up. And he hands oh. her a coin. and his. Was it 
grandfather or great grandfather was from from, from Bravos. Bravos, yeah. So he, he has this Bravosi connection, right? And he he was I known would... for squeezing gold out of the Iron Bank, basically. So he has these Bravosi connections. Mm. connections. Yeah. So I, I think he's alive still. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we get one of these many-faced surprises like this. I, I <laughs> bet that'll happen. Whether it's so. Ned or Littlefinger or somebody like that, somebody who's presumed to be dead or thought to be dead, will return through this mechanism. I have yeah. hope for that. I have hope I too. Like That'd it. be so cool. The Sirio yeah. Farrell is the other big one that people think may still be alive. Arya's water dancing teacher. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. People think he could have been replaced Bravos, by a... Yeah. He might have a connection. Yeah. Uh. So, so what's uh, what's your number three, Lady Rachel? My number three is the opening scene with little Ned Umber. Oh, um, nice. Running through the forest. And I kind of dubbed it the flashback that's not a flashback. Right. It was so cool how they totally mirrored that pilot episode scene. They even have the Baratheon music playing. I know. I noticed that too. I what the hell? I was like, what the hell? Yeah. So it was very reminiscent of when Robert... Um, King Robert showed up at Winterfell with, um, you know, the whole Lannister and Baratheon train and um, little so Ned many climbing the tree really reminded me of Bran climbing up the bannermints at Winterfell to get a peek of the army marching in and John riding in on that big black horse with the big cape and jumping off to go give Bran a hug. It just really was so reminiscent for me of the pilot episode, for sure. Nice. Yeah, it's such a great scene. I, I noticed the, the Baratheon music playing as well. After having heard it repeat so many times while the Blu-ray was sitting on pause on the menu screen. Um, but yeah, how about the uh, how about that new intro sequence with all the updated graphics and everything like that? What'd you guys oh, think yeah. of that? I I knew when I saw that like little ice trail yeah, the tiles going down, flipping down and it ended at the last hearth. I knew that something was going to happen at the last hearth this episode. Every episode, we're going to see those tiles go farther and farther and we're going to see the ice expand farther south, I bet. I think that's what they're <laughs> going for. And um, we see the crypts of Winterfell. I really think the crypts of Winterfell are going to be key in whoever survives the Battle of Winterfell. I think the crypts are really going to play a huge role in that um, survival wise because they're supposed to be miles deep. Um, Winterfell in the books is set on hot springs, so it stays um, like the walls stay warm. Yeah, water and... flows through the walls, supposedly. Wow. Yeah, interestingly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I love that we get. Oh, and Duncan. So remember my the wheel um, oh, yeah. analogy that I did? Okay. So the sun now spins counterclockwise. So it totally threw me for a loop. I'm going to have to go back and reanalyze, <laughs> reanalyze what that means. So nice. that's probably like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, she, she has a theory where she analyzed the intro ring with all the different um, house sigils gotcha. and like try to figure out what they're, if there was like hidden messages. How in the wheel there. is going to break. I actually didn't even realize that the intro had subtle changes previously. Yeah, you know, I, like I it never would show locations either. differently and stuff. I noticed it this time because the change was so much drastic. more dramatic. Um, but my and I know there were people who had strong feelings about that because like anything people are devoted to change. <laughs> I, I hate change. Um, <laughs> and I get that. I didn't, you know, the graphics on the intro to me, I've never really looked that deep into the subtleties of them to try to interpret them. But yeah, for me, here. it's like, as long as that intro music doesn't change, I don't care. <laughs> right, yeah, uh, yeah. As, long, as long as that stays the same, because it's it's it hits just as good as Star Wars or anything else does. And it uh, as far as setting the stage for any show or movie experience, Game of Thrones is 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 up there. You wonder what it would be like if it had some lame, <laughs> crappy song, yeah. you know, or just like ruin the vibe. Um, yeah. But uh, I, yeah, I actually just found online the other day, randomly browsing around, but I found a little music box, like little manufactured music boxes and you crank it and it's the Game of Thrones theme and little chimes. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. Oh, nice. Just because, you know, when the show's not on anymore, I'll totally. have that in the future as a mantelpiece or something. I noticed that- It's um, my alarm clock in the morning. Oh man, I might uh, have to do that. I noticed that you played a couple seconds of the Game of Thrones theme last night on your live show too. 
Oh yeah. The well, the, the gag was, of course, um, uh, we go our 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 time slot on YouTube is nine Eastern on Sunday nights. Oh, which, so the music you know, starts at the same time as the show. Right. That was kind of the gag I was aiming for. Is like <laughs> someone turning on the TV. It's Game of Thrones, and they're actually like, "Nope, this can wait. I'm going to I'm going to the stream." That's great. So, uh, anything else you want to add about that intro scene, Rachel? Um. Sansa needs to get that stick out of her ass. That's, mm. I mean, like, I love Sansa. She's been growing on me as a character, but my God, this episode, I just kind of wanted to slap her and just be like, open up a little bit. It just this- shows you, like, John is sort of thinking on a different level and has been for a number of seasons where he sees the big picture and realizes that the Night King is the threat and that it's really just all that matters is the battle between life and death. And, you know, slowly other people around him are starting to come around to that, but Sansa's just not quite there yet. Otherwise, she would see the importance of the dragons. And, and she's and, doing a great job of le- of being Lady of Winterfell. I think she really has slid into that role and is doing a really great job, but she needs to realize that it doesn't matter whether he loves her or not. Daenerys Targaryen is an invaluable ally in this war. She has dragons. They breathe fire. And what kills the White Walkers? Fire. So why don't you just like smile and be just slightly nice to her? I just feel like that tension, it's either going to grow to some type of climax or they're going to have like a little heart to heart and kind of get on the same page. And I'm hoping for that, but this is Game of Thrones. We got so. a little bit of a heart to heart at the end of this episode when uh, they sort of connected and John was like, do you have any faith in me at all? <laughs> you know? That's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And he's His like, voiceovers are awesome. She'll, yeah. You know, she'll, she'll be a good queen for all of us, he says. And Sansa's like, oh, yeah. She kind of like warms up to it a little bit by the end of this episode. So I'm hoping that that tension disappears. And it, it inevitably will. They had to have some people up north not want to accept Daener- Daenerys and not want to accept this because northern folks are known for their stubbornness and their their hard-headedness. So it would have been – it wouldn't have made any sense if everybody was just like, okay, cool, dragon queen, come on in, you know? I, I had difficulty interpreting some of that conflict. That is to say, is is it something about Daenerys uniquely that Sansa dislikes, or is it just her her protectionism Good for question. her house? I th- uh, it, well, that is to say, could Daenerys be anybody, and Sansa hates her the same? I think that or is it something um, about Daenerys? It one Daenerys is the su- the daughter of the Mad King, and the Mad mm. King murdered their grandfather and uncle. That's right. Um, okay. So that's kind of crazy too. They don't trust the Targaryens. Yeah. The North just don't like the Targaryens in general. And I think that's where some of this distrust might be stemming from. But I also think it seeds that little finger planted about John yeah, bending he can, the knee to Danny yep. because she's beautiful and right, he okay. wants to marry her. Yeah, so yeah, fucking little Sansa's, finger. He's still screwing us over from the She's trying grave. to figure out, like, are you bending the knee because you want some of Danny or are you bending the knee because you truly think that she can win this war against the night King? Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, the the North was its own kingdom. It's separate from the rest for thousands of years. And the Northern King, the last Northern King, um, what's his face? Um, One of the Starks. um, Torin. Torin Stark. Yeah. He knelt to a Targaryen, to Aegon the Conqueror. So it's it's like a sort of history repeating itself. Finally, the Northern Kingdom gets its own autonomy and sovereignty. And then all of a sudden, this, this foreign ruler comes in with dragons and is like, fuck all you guys, we're taking this back. You know? Like, so it makes sense for them to be real fucking mad. For Sansa, too, it'd be... As far as I recall, it, I don't remember her providing a better plan maybe i missed that that's kind of what's annoying is like i get where you're coming from but right you're right it's a bad plan what's your plan uh unless you have um even the part in this episode where she's kind of bitter like well i didn't plan to feed these armies and what do dragons <laughs> even eat like well a uh, good problem to have that you have dragons right. we'll figure out how to feed right. them and the largest army in westeros now yeah these are all good good problems yes they pose issues about you know provisions but you know, I'm sure Danny's probably regretting burning up that loot train oh, last man. season with all Such the provisions. A mistake. That was yeah. They should have turned him north, but yeah. 
I mean, it could cause a problem, but I think the more immediate issue is that the Night King is like, if if they're at the last hearth, they're like a day away from Winterfell. <laughs> I don't know about that, it's, but it's they're, they're pretty a close. Day and, a, a day and a half. Is that okay? how far it is? I think so. I think it's pretty close. Mm. It was close on the map, and I don't know how to scale that <laughs> opening credit is, but I think they're going to have enough provisions to last them till the, the war. Hopefully. I mean, it's it's coming. So, it's coming soon. <laughs> Speaking of dragons, we get the dragons buzzing Winterfell and flying down right over the top of Winterfell as Danny arrives and everybody's taken, you know, just astonished with the sight. We get Arya's first glimpse of a dragon and she smiles after She's seeing stoked. it go by. And then we see the, the flying over the battlements and Sansa turns to watch him and she does not smile. She is very stone faced. She's got a poker face on. It makes it kind of hard to interpret mm -hmm. what she's thinking, but. Judging on what she, what her reactions to Danny are later in the episode, she's not too stoked about it, for sure. Yeah, dragons. I, I was curious, Duncan, what you thought of Danny's smile when the Northerners started kind of wigging out as the dragons flew overhead. Oh, and John's like, like, I looks told up you, and smiles. Yeah, it's kind of like, ha ha. I felt like I'll show them who they should fear. <laughs> <laughs> she does like, you know, instilling fear in her rivals and potential uh, enemies. So <laughs> that makes sense. We also got, we got Arya seeing Jon and then just disappearing after she sees Sandor. I was wondering, why do you guys think that Arya wasn't there to greet Jon when he finally arrived? I mean, those two are like two peas in a pod. You know, he made her needle and they just like had such a close bond. It was surprising that Arya wasn't there when he, when he got off the horse. Um, I personally think she wanted their reunion to be private. Yeah, it makes sense. And yeah. it could have been clouded by drama if the Hound was there and, you know, that they're being reunited at yeah. the same time. That's kind of what I was thinking. Hmm. Yeah, that, I'd forgotten about that, too. There were so many of those moments in this uh, in this episode of yeah. like... Hey, I remember you. Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, just kind of staring so at good. each other, glimpses back and forth, or even brief dialogue. But it was it was kind of interesting. I liked a lot of that, even though, of course, Arya and the Hound have had a, a, a long history. Mm -hmm. But because the show is so complicated with so many simultaneous narratives and developments and characters, you sometimes forget, oh, yeah, these people haven't really interacted before or these people haven't interacted for like x amount of seasons yeah since they robbed so, you and left you for dead <laughs> yeah so they kind of run together and i i, I did appreciate that because it's like yeah i guess i i haven't seen these characters interact or i i had forgotten it's like you know they're reminiscing about um about uh, joffrey's death and stuff that was what was the line that was given there between Sansa and Tyrion. Oh, where it was yeah. Like, Talking about the oh, wedding. It had its good was, moments. Yeah, it had its moments, Sansa said about... About the uh, uh, purple the, wedding. Yeah, which, you know, I mean, <laughs> of, the, of all the things I love about the show, it's like... I mean, nobody's safe in Game of Thrones, so that's the best part. The people you love might die. The people, But every death is is so emotionally involved because you have cases like Joffrey where you've been waiting for it forever and it's the best it delivers. You get to see his weird purple <laughs> yes. stupid face. And then every other character that you love that you're so emotionally invested in, you can't believe they kill off like Ned Stark for oh in the first God. season. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that's why I love the show so much. Like I, I tailed off of The Walking Dead because so many of the the main characters were pretty safe. They had some mm. high profile deaths. I'm not I don't want to spoil for anybody who's watching it or whatever, <laughs> but but it just you got the sense that like okay, here and oh no, the the main character's in peril again. Look at him yep, narrowly yep. escape. I can't believe it. That doesn't happen here. It's like it's, on several occasions in this show it's just you you're in those spots where you think no, they they're not going to do this. Are they really they're going to do this and they go through with it and then the credits roll. And you're like, "All right, Cool. Yeah. They, that's that's how they get you. Totally. That's, that's why I love the show. <laughs> it's so good. Nobody's safe. Did you yeah. uh, did you watch the show right off the bat, Matt, or did you jump on board later? I did not actually start watching it because uh, I've I've never been um, into like that. What would you call the genre? And not right, like, like fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, I don't even know. Medieval. Kings and queens and dragons and all that. that's never been my thing. So I always thought like, ah, that's some that's some nerd crap. But then um, <laughs> same here, man. Had some people tell me to get into it. So I actually did not watch it 
until the end of season seven. Oh, and wow. Season it. seven. Yeah. Damn. And then I want, I, I, so I started that, or maybe it was around the start of season seven. I started watching like August, September, 2017. Nice. So was nice. that, that was around the time that it was like during that season's run, I think right around there. Yeah. Yeah. Right after and, season seven ended. Yeah. And the, the first episode of game of Thrones is like such a punch in the face that it's like, okay, okay. Really? Because I hadn't had no spoilers. I mean, I knew there was like, I knew that incest was a thing in the show and stuff, but I, I just, I guess I just didn't expect such immediate exposure to such adult <laughs> themes. Let's put it that way. Hilarious. <laughs> Unbelievable. For sure. And so I was like, all right. I mean, okay, I can get into this. And <laughs> I mean, you know how it goes for me. I get very, I actually get very bored with TV. Generally, I'm not a binge watcher because so, so there's so little that captures my attention that much that I can't stop watching it. I get bored. This was one of those shows where it's like, okay, I, all right, what is it? 1 a.m.? All right, one more. One yeah, more yeah. And then we'll go to bed. That kind oh, of thing. It's so good, man. Uh, so I actually finished watching it, watching all, all through seasons, all through the seven seasons within like six weeks or something like that. Like I watched it aggressively. Sounds about and right. And then we watched it uh, all the way through again, like November, December, January this year. Nice. To refresh. Yeah. And that was really fun because I watched it with someone. Um, I didn't catch all the episodes, but most of them, probably like three quarters with someone who was new to the series. Oh, that's so always that, so much that fun. That was the best because I know what's going to happen and I'm trying not to <laughs> yeah. spoil, but I'm sitting there kind of like with the grin on my face, yeah. especially for the red wedding and stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, you like, you like that Rob Stark, do you? That's the best. All right. Enjoy that character. Subtle yeah. comments uh, beforehand, like, oh man, I bet I bet he's gonna be in the end game. You know, like <laughs> when when I'm watching with somebody, I'll say things to throw them off of what's gonna happen. Yeah. I'll be like, dude, just wait till season seven with Rob Stark, you know, or something like <laughs> It something is like fun that. when you're watching with someone like that and you try to um Yeah, just ask them questions about like where do you think this is going? Right. Like, what do you think is gonna happen with this person or this thing? Preserve and the then mystique. They try to, and then and then they, they try to have that internal battle in their head where they'll, they can't decide if they want to know or they don't. Like <laughs> yeah. they want the spoiler or they don't. And that's always really fun. So, totally. Um, yeah. So I, I, I should have watched this show, you know, through its, through its whole run. But that's the thing, too, is like when you watch it, when you binge it the way I did, when you want to know the answer to what happens, you have that immediate gratification. Yep. Now. Oh, my God. I know. Now I'm watching it in the same. Everybody who watches week by week. It's like, uh, you know, I'm really thirsty. I didn't for sleep last answers. night. Welcome I watched it club. twice last night. Oh, you watched I it through twice. I, I <laughs> did. I, I watched it with my husband and he called out some things like he immediately called out who Bran was waiting for. Oh, nice. And I was like, oh, my God. That <laughs> so was crazy. so cool. Yeah. I was like an old friend, huh? I wonder what he's talking about. Yeah. And then, you know, Should I know have known. We were, we so obvious. podcasting earlier today than usual. So I wasn't sure if I was going to have a chance to, like, rewatch it before yeah. we got on today. So I decided just to watch it back to back. And I'm kind of glad I did because it really opened up the show for me again. And I've... I ended the the second watch a little less melancholy than I did the first watch. Nice, yeah, I, I, I have that there feeling were some too. Moments that I got excited about. I, so I bet that in context with the full season, people will, will enjoy this episode more than like having it end with no action and having to wait another week. It's probably got people a little little sour about it. Yeah. My husband said he goes, they need a little bit of happiness because I think there's going to be a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of main characters are going to get killed sure. off. So I. Bring it on. We as an audience may look back on this episode as a fond, like, farewell to these yeah, characters. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's, that was the mentality I tried to have last night is like, well, if I think about this, where it fits, the piece that it is in this broader picture, it does make sense to me why this approach would be taken in this spot. Mm -hmm. sure. So yeah, if exactly. I have to wait one more week to, to have the, like the, there weren't a lot of jaw droppers and you know, you're expecting jaw droppers that didn't necessarily happen this mm -hmm. week, but I, I, I know that they must happen in yeah. the coming weeks. So I'm not, I'm not that bummed about it. Yeah, typically with like a, a season premiere, you're expecting some expecting something big and flashy, and instead they decided to give us like the emotional payoff that we've been waiting for for so long yeah. for all these scenarios: the Hound and Arya being reunited, you know, all these different cool things. <laughs> Duncan, how did you feel about their their reuniting? Because I know that you love these two as a duo. I thought it was and... perfect, man. 
I, I did too, but I thought Arya was a little bit colder to him than I thought she would. I think he was going to be warm with her, a little as as warm as the hound can be. Right. Um, but she just cold shouldered him like the whole interaction. I think she's like kind of accentuating how cold she is, so she can like show off the hound to the hound like how far she's come. That she's what a badass she's she a is. badass. Yeah, and I think that you know he's like you are a cold bitch, aren't you? You know, and I, I feel like <laughs> when he said that he was basically complimenting her like oh i did a good job with my you know my our months together on the road i thought he felt proud with how you know tough she is that was, that was pretty cool yeah what did you think matt what was your um favorite reunion of characters this episode actually the very end the brand oh, jamie yeah. <laughs> the glance i'm like oh yeah yeah i forgot it the, the whole the moment that like made me decide the show was for me yeah because if i'm not mistaken they have had there's been no encounter between those two since, right? right? Yeah. That's not, not ever any. happened. Yep. Same with same with Arya and John too. That they haven't seen each other since the pilot episode. So yeah, like, yeah. like that. And, and that's huge things. That that singular instance has has spawned so many. Like it, it's it's at the center of so many so much of the show's storylines. Yeah. Like this one instance of pushing the kid out the window. Amazing. Um, wow. Yeah. And. And of course, this episode basically had no Jamie Lannister at all. He just kind of shows up looking like he has some kind of Bieber haircut, by the way. We <laughs> he were commenting like a, on that. He's like, what, what is this? He, yeah, he looks like a, he was a Beatles member or something like that. And then he sees Bran. But that that was also why that was cool. There was pretty much no Jamie Lannister until he shows up and just has this kind of eye glance back and forth with, with Bran Stark. Epic stare down, too. Like, yeah. oh my. And the look on Jamie's like face. Waldo. Oh my God. Yeah. What a yeah. performance so well. there. Wow. I yeah. was amazed that all the emotion that he was managing to capture with just that stare and the moment where he like turns around and pulls his hood off it sort of reminded me of the the reveal of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars episode 7 uh. right at the end uh. he, you know, he turns around with the hood and does the same thing maybe it was a slight homage to that Hmm. That's one thing we like doing is pointing out homages to other other shows and movies uh, that is, we can find. Is that common in Game of Thrones? I guess I haven't noticed a ton of them, but I, as I said, I'm not the biggest movie buff to know what might be a nod and what wouldn't be. Yeah, there's, the, been, a there's been a bunch. Yeah, definitely. Like hmm. there was one where um, Stannis tells John. Um, no, John tells Stannis, "I was told to keep your enemies close." And Stannis is like, uh, he's like, whoever said that didn't, you know, didn't have many enemies. <laughs> so that's like a, sure. a Godfather reference. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer, you know? Oh, I see. I see. Type thing. Um, I, I hate to be abrupt, but I'll have to, I'll have to call it very soon here. I that's all good, off. my friend. No, we totally understand. Oh. We're just excited to have you on. Sure. Th yeah, this definitely. was fun. I mean, this is, this was, this was really cool. I don't get opportunities to talk about this kind of stuff very much. So nice. Uh, so that's much appreciated. Well, open door, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And like you, I thought it was a fucking nerdy ass show too. You know, you know. But now look at me. I got fucking swords everywhere and shit. <laughs> like swords and maps and all kinds <laughs> of crap. If I can ask one question too before I hop off, if it's not inappropriate. Anything what are you, you guys want. planning? What are you guys planning to do when the show is over? We're going to cover yeah. the spinoff series. Um, oh, there is going to be a spinoff series. Yeah, one okay. is already yes. in production. It's going to be about the previous long night. So the first time the oh, White Walkers cool. came, that should be really exciting. We're looking forward to doing that. We're, we're talking about doing a chapter by chapter book coverage too and just oh, going okay, through all okay. the books it would take like six seven years probably, but it would at least. So it doesn't mean the end of your show though. You don't have to no, stop no, when the show ends. We're going to keep going. All right. Well, thanks guys. Uh, I, I appreciate it very much. You and I'll are be in welcome. Touch. Sounds good, sure, man. You're welcome back thing. anytime, you. dude. Sure. Appreciate it. All right. Nice All right, meeting bye. you, man. So let's talk for just a sp another sp split second about Jamie arriving at Winterfell. Um, yes. Man, all, after all of the anticipation for the years leading up to this moment, it it was fantastic to see that look. And out of all the epic stare downs that we've seen on this show, like like Tyrion and Tywin during the trial, trial or John and the Night King at Hard Home. Um, this this is right up there, man, with, with those ones. What do, do you agree? What do you think? Um, I totally agree. And again, I'm going to echo my sentiment of sometimes the wordless scenes in this series are always the most impactful for me personally. Great point. There, there was nothing said between the two of them. It was just 
their looks. And Nikolai Kosterwaldo just nailed it. I mean, absolutely nailed that performance. He's just kind of scanning Winterfell. It's been almost a decade, or, you know, I guess in our world, it's been almost a decade since he's been to Winterfell. But mm. he's kind of looking around and smiling. You know, he was smiling, smiling when he looked around Winterfell. Yeah. He's probably having, you know, memories. And then he scans over and there's this creeper sitting in a wheelchair, like, just, just still staring at him. <laughs> staring at him. Bran was creeping a lot in this episode. So, many, like, <laughs> looking up at Tyrion, too, and he was standing on the second story after talking with uh, with Sansa. Yes, yes. Bran is gr- he's a great creeper, dude. He, he's got I, creeping I down. creep like Bran. <laughs> <laughs> Lurk like Arya, creep like Bran. Dude, I like it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, and so that smile, as he smiles when he looks around Winterfell, Reading into that, it could have some interesting implications. It could be like a relief that finally he feels like. Remember what Theon said to John about every step you take is is the right step. You know, I think mm-hmm. maybe maybe Jamie feels like he's finally starting to take the right steps again. You know, and now he's yeah. on the side of the good. You know, the the on the side of life, standing with people that that he loves, like Tyrion for a cause that he believes in, I feel like mm-hmm. um, he feels like he's on his path and he's doing good at this point, which makes me worried about him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Anytime um, anybody's happy or like smiles or something, I'm like, fuck. Well, this is this, this whole, that whole idea is, I feel what this entire episode embodies is people are, a little except for Sansa who's pissed because she's just being a sister and you know her brother's in love kind of thing but I really feel like I mean Danny and John going on a dragon joy ride through these <sighs> canyons and making out in front of a it's waterfall like, like the, and, the Aladdin music starts playing as they're like yeah you know it's <laughs> magic like I love ride. it as a viewer I, I of course want to see dragons we got so many so many like so much screen time of dragons this episode which I loved but I feel that that was kind of like their farewell there there's not going to be another moment in this series that they're going to have a happy moment together in my opinion I <sighs> I truly feel it, that it hurts I, I know to, you don't I don't I know you don't watch like on the next episode, uh, but uh, I think the Battle of Winterfell is gonna come sooner rather than later. Damn. And I'm calling it I think it's gonna be episode three. Damn. Okay. That mean that would And I won't spoil I won't spoil why I think that, but the biggest reason is I looked at the times of the episodes and episode three is the longest. Mm. Just that, um, just that's a good wise, reason. And just kind of where the Night King is on the map, he is in between the last hearth and Winterfell. Mm-hmm. So it's if it took him, you know, however many days to get to the last hearth from the wall, he's not too far away. I mean, it's not like a month away. It's a few days. I think at, what Castle Black is like a two week ride from Winterfell or something like that. Is that right? But I think from Eastwatch East Watch to the last is, hearth is let's less say, let's, time. Let's consult the map. Okay. Where's the last hearth? Last hearth is, oh actually actually yeah last hearth is like like just over just under halfway from Castle Black to or to Winterfell. Yeah so so the Night King is in between the last hearth and Winterfell. Oh, man. So it's like a little bit of space. So that's what I'm saying. I think they're only a few days away. Yeah, I think you're right. That's um, fucking hardcore. Yeah, so I think the Battle of Winterfell is going to be episode three. All right. So what happens after the Battle of Winterfell? Does Winterfell fall and they're forced to retreat to King's Landing and that's what I happens next? I think they're going to be forced to retreat to the Iron Islands. Oh, the Iron Islands. Ooh, oh, because, how about the Eyrie? How about the Eyrie? Oh, that would make well, sense. Sansa has connections about there. The Eyrie oh, the dragons. The dragon. But the Iron Islands also. Yeah, but the army of the dead can't swim. 
Well, so that doesn't mean have... they can't walk on the ocean floor and all come walking out together. I think that that's oh like a red herring, you know, like oh, the, they specifically asked it. You know, your was like, can they swim? And John's like, no. <laughs> so they baited oh, us. Anyone. They baited us into thinking islands are safe. But there's all the like those lines from the books. What is it? Patchface says something about dead things in the water and stuff oh, like that. So, oh my God, like that song. Yeah, yeah. The there's It's Always Summer and... Under the Sea. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my God. It's so like, it's entirely no, it, no possible. Safe. Yeah, it's entirely possible right. that we could have the fucking army of the dead come marching out of the water and just take everybody by surprise. I am... Uh, that would be such a mind fuck for me because I feel like I want there to be some safety. Like, <laughs> There's no safety. You know, so, okay, the eerie. So let's say just for argument's sake that the dead, well, maybe the eerie is then the safer place because we've seen the undead jump off the mountain at hard home, but we've never seen them climb like a large distance and like, I mean, as like spasmodic and jerky as those guys are you know it I might be kind of hard to climb off, you know <laughs> be like so world war z just, would be a safe place yeah, yeah it'd be like world war z just building a giant fucking ramp of undead yeah, climb up oh my gosh so what's okay. next i think it's my number three right yeah what's your number three my number three is John and Arya reunited with a surprising okay. dynamic. Yes, this is my number two. Nice. All right, so let's collaborate. First, we get to see Arya seeing John arrive as he rides into Winterfell with Daenerys. And the look that crosses uh, all over, like, look that just flushes all over her face, Arya, she looks so excited. Like, <gasps> you know, there he is, John. No. Like, I, I think she was, like, going to say something. I know, like, she was call like, his name. John. I, was, I couldn't believe and she then, didn't shout. <laughs> and I think she caught herself. And yeah. then he didn't see her, and I think she felt a little sad. She but didn't then want to look gave weak, her though. This opportunity to meet him and on her private. terms. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that's so cool. So um, she she looks so stoked, and then she's not nowhere to be found when he arrives because she was lurking. Or for all we know, she could have popped on another face and been standing in that crowd the whole time. Just didn't want she Sandor could've. to see him, see her. You know what I mean? I also love. Because in the pilot episode, Lady Stark, Catelyn, she looks around at all of her children. She goes, where's Arya? Oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. she wasn't around, then she shows up with that, like, funky <laughs> ass helmet on. Love it. Yeah, we sort of um, got, we got a good portion of that first arrival from her perspective, you know, as, mm -hmm. so I thought that mirrored getting it from young Ned Umber's perspective kind of this time, yeah. which was really cool. Yeah. So, and, you know, Sansa being the lady of Winterfell now, she's like, she's lurking somewhere, lurking. you know, like, who Love knows it. where Arya is? She's always lurking. <laughs> and she is, you too. Have a lurker and a creeper. And a, and, a, and a brooder or moper would be John, right? <laughs> Yeah, totally. so we get John brooding in the Godswood first, which we're about to talk about. We get him brooding in the in the crypts later too, but first he's brooding in the gods, which is standing sullen, just looking at the hot tree, you know, and thinking of his dad. Yeah, <laughs> thinking about his dad probably. That's what I was thinking too. And uh, so Arya just appears behind him, and he he thought like he should have heard her walk up. You know, because it's snowy. You'd hear the feet, the feet on the on the ground and everything. So it's like, how did you sneak up on me? And she says, how did you survive a knife through the heart? Right. And oh my God, both by magic. Yeah. Because Arya is using true. like this faceless man magic, and John was like revived by the Lord of Light with his magic potentially. So um, it's just kind of cool that they both have these sort of like supernatural things that have occurred to them or are, are still occurring. And uh, I like that. And he says, I didn't survive the, the knife through the heart. So he's totally honest with her. And at this point, they're like, like, like standing a good like 20 feet apart from each other. Yeah. But they just rush each other and like can't hold back anymore and they embrace and Arya like like presses her head up against his you know oh, his, his, his neck face. and his face oh my gosh he like their faces, literally yeah. is like crying I swear I think Harrington's actually crying in that scene probably I mean like 
good actor, so it, it would it would fit. And like, just they had such a close relationship. And he, the, one of the first things he uh, he does is he looks it. down and sees needle, and he's like, "You still have it." And mm-hmm. and have you ever used it? And uh, she it's says its name, <laughs> Need- Needle. Yeah, once or twice. And she kind of like, you know, gives like a, a look like she's she's not happy about having to had to use Needle, um, which I think is a good sign for her character, mm-hmm. indicating that she's not like a total psychopath, that she's feeling remorse for that stable boy <laughs> that she stuck with Needle through the gut mm-hmm. when he threatened to bring her to Cersei. So, and um, um, well, I don't think she feels guilty about Polliver because oh, she no. got him right through the throat. Yeah, she she had a choice there. She, she didn't have to do that. She had a lot of deaths though with needles specifically. She's True. used other means to kill people, but needle has been sparsely used in her assassins. Um, I think we're going to get more of it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And we'll probably get more of it this year, I'm hoping. It's like Chekhov's needle, we'll say. <laughs> we, yes. They show it to us in the first episode. We got to expect it to be used later on. So yeah. speaking of needle, I took note that John basically effectively saved Arya's life and enabled her whole journey to find herself and on her pathway to become a faceless man or woman in this case by having needle forged in the first place. You know what I mean? Nice. So I like it. So she, he has needle forged, which which is actually, which is what she used to escape King's Landing. She wouldn't have sur- survived without it, and then, um, or at least not escaped. And I thought it was very, it was sort of a very Ned action of John to even have the blade made in the first place. And actually, John was sort of even leading the way um, with this whole thing. And Ned only realized that John was right later and decided to arrange for Arya's water dancing lessons. You know what I mean? So it's true. Yeah. So it's like John was even like ahead of Ned with he was certain the catalyst things. Yeah, to we, her her reason for being yeah it's so cool man so cool but she looks at the hilt of um my god why am i blanking on his sword's name oh, long claw yeah she's like ooh, look at that like she sees <laughs> the like, hilt and, and everything pulls it out and hands it to her and <laughs> you know how they always uh, have that sound effect like shing. there's no metal on that on like the part of the I, sword where you where you put like in this like at the mouth of the scabbard or something yeah, yeah you don't want leather. to scratch your blade up right so it's like probably yeah. totally silent when you draw a sword yeah. like that <laughs> or a different sound <laughs> yeah but uh, i i love how they always do that and tv shows or things like that just doesn't make any sense but it's awesome at the same time it's it's like my pet peeve of when they make horses like neigh and whinny. Oh, right, right. Exactly. Like yeah. Areas that they shouldn't even be they like just be making chilling. any sound. Yeah, they just It be drives quiet. me crazy. So funny. So, so, uh, uh, so he busts out the Valyrian steel and, and she's like, ooh, Valyrian steel, right? And he's like, jealous. And I was well, well, it's a little too heavy for me. <laughs> yeah, like she I have a lighter one. I'm surprised she didn't bust out hers at the same time, too. Like, you know what I mean? I know. So uh so John's like, where the fuck were you? And the same thing I'm thinking. That made me think uh maybe she was there with a different face, you know, but she just couldn't reveal okay. herself at that point. And this this is where the scene starts to get interesting. John's like, I could have used your help with Sansa. Pff, she's still acting crazy, you know. And uh, and yeah, she thinks she's smarter than everyone. And Arya stands up for Sansa big time I was here. So shocked! Whoa, when she I said know. This. I, me too. I was completely surprised. She's the smartest person I've ever met. It's like what the fuck, Sansa? And like... John is like, you're, now you're defending her. <laughs> but she has a good point. Like she's defending our family, you know, and and so is Sansa. And yeah. uh, John John's like, yeah, you know. I'm her family too. And she, she gives him a big too. hug and whispers this here. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. That was like, like the oh most, my God. that was the most shocking moment of the whole episode for me. So I was wondering, do you think maybe Bran told his sisters about John's little secret? And she's like saying in that moment, oh, like, Oh, gotta be. Don't forget gotta that be. you are, are still family has to like, be like you're still related to us even though you're going to find out at the end of this episode that you're a targaryen yeah you nailed that 
I would I back that theory. They have to all know, and she she knows that it's not her responsibility to tell him because she's not the one that discovered it. So she yeah, she and knows. I also thought that's maybe another reason that Sansa was so standoffish to Daenerys because she knows that they're related and that they're in love and and that it that could be easy kind of for like John to pick sides with her. Yeah. Damn, yeah, exactly. that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. They could be worried about, like Sansa and Arya could be worried that Jon may turn on them. Yeah. Which is yeah. mind-blowing. I Damn. just got that feeling of, like, I, the way she said, don't forget, don't forget that, like, we, you're going to find out very soon here that we're not going to be, we're not brother and sister anymore, but we are still cousins. You uh-huh. know, it's like, we're still family. And I think technically I to, he's closer related to Daenerys than to either of them. Yeah. Yeah. By one degree. Crazy. So I was trying to figure out when I was rewatching it, um, reasons for it it came about when Sansa was being kind of a bitch to Danny is why be so standoffish to the queen? Like what, what could that, how could that benefit your situation? And I think it's just because she knows, she knows the situation. She knows that they're related. Very nervous about, yeah, losing John to Danny type thing. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. Also, I like that. And also just the fact that she knows that they are like in love and that there's incest going on and Oh right. She's you know, like gross. Like <laughs> she might be just a little like put off by this whole um union and have preconceived notions and that's why she's so standoffish like you mentioned with Littlefinger too um, the fact that he was planting seeds in her mind that John was mystified by Daenerys' beauty and Mm -hmm. things like that it could easily um, be um, you know something that is sprouting and making her worried that John is um, neglecting duty in favor of love. You know, that, that theme that we keep talking about um, love being the death of duty. Um, Wow. Speaking of uh, love being the death of duty, I think we need to talk next about, I think then this, then is it the next scene with, with Liana Mormont and everybody all together? Um, the next scene that we actually jump to is Kyburn. Oh and man! And terrible news. All right, all right, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's let's continue on track. We'll get to that scene eventually. Yeah. Little Lady yeah. Liana. Okay, so moving on to my number two. Now that we've covered my three and your two, my number two is Bronn being hired to kill Jamie and Tyrion. <gasps> what the, what fuck? the fuck, dude? Bronn oh, the betrayer. My God. Yeah, well, yes. he hasn't done it yet. I'm not sure. I yeah. was just going to say, I'm jumping to conclusions, but... This may be the the seeds of his undoing, though. Uh, oh if he takes God. the gold and then doesn't follow through on it, then Cersei would have good reason to send and assassins to after a, him. We had to get a good sex scene in the first episode here, too. It's like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot, I forgot about that. I think we've seen all three of those women before, haven't we? I know we for sure see the redhead. The one, the one who says that she's partial to older men. I think no, we saw I, oh, her. We her. She's too? the one that pulls okay. her, her foot behind her head. No, that's the girl There's... that's riding Ron. Okay, then I, I've seen her at some point. I okay, know. I I didn't recognize the other two, but I recognized her because she's in the orgy scene. I may have been looking at other things besides their faces. Okay, well, you, <laughs> you can look. I'm not going to look at that. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah. So, Bronn's uh, getting some action and bragging about his exploits at the loot train battle, which I thought was funny. They're talking about the battle and everything. Shot a dragon. Yeah. I'm the only man you ever met who shot a dragon. <laughs> Nearly killed it. <laughs> uh, that, he's bragging That's about brave. it. But, yeah. And then they're talking about these guys with all like the di- crazy yeah, disfigurement. This guy has no eyelids, Bronn. Oh. That's like way more creepy than you shooting a dragon. So Bronn of the Blackwater. Kai Byrne arrives out of nowhere and Bronn's like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. <laughs> and this is at least the second time we've seen Bronn get interrupted. Well, he's just trying to get some action. Can the guy not catch a break? Come on. And what did I say, dude? Like, 
we had one episode last season where Bron mentioned where Cersei mentions Bron, and then the next episode Bron mentions Cersei. I knew there was going to be some type of connection between these two characters. Um, I I the whole time watching it the first time I was just like, no, Bron, no, don't do it. You know, I know, no. I know. Oh man! So he immediately Kyburn is trying to um, turn Bron against. Jamie and Tyrion. He the first thing he says, other than "poor girl, the pox will take her within the year." <laughs> Bron like spits out his drink. I'm sorry. <laughs> which which oh one? God. You know, like which which I want to know which one to avoid in the future. <laughs> so uh, he he points out. Kyburn says that the Queen's brothers made promises to you and broke them. Immediately trying to turn Bron against them, he says, uh, "Her Grace wants to rectify that." And Bron has a great line. She once gave me a castle and a wife, then rectified me right out of them, <laughs> which I liked. And uh, he points out, no, technically that was Sir Jamie's doing. And uh, she was. That's yeah, fair. Queen Cersei, when she wants something, she pays in advance. And in this and case, in yeah, there's a wagon with multiple chests of gold in, in it out there. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like, it's so tempting. And I'm like, don't do it, Bron, don't do it. And he assumes she wants somebody dead. Uh, but can't send her soldiers. And so we should be thinking, oh, man, it's got to be another Lannister, right? So <laughs> Kyburn, the Queen's brothers are unlikely to survive their northern adventures, which is true. But even in the off chance that they do, Cersei is still willing to throw down gold just on the chance that they survive to, to make sure that they get executed. And uh, <laughs> she has a keen sense of poetic justice as he retrieves a crossbow and holds it up. I think it's the crossbow that Joffrey's? Tyrion used. Oh. No, that Tyrion used to kill Tywin. Wasn't that Joffrey's crossbow, though? Oh, was it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. The gilded, I... uh, all the ornate. Oh, yeah, the one that you have. Wait. Yeah, it's got the crank on the the lever on it and stuff. No, because Joffrey's you didn't have the crank. Joffrey's okay. you had the crank maybe to make it, it easier. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's right. That's right. You're right. So maybe it maybe it is Joffrey's bow. Oh man! I never realized that when Tyrion used it to kill Tywin that it could have been Joffrey's. Yeah, because we get that shot of the like looking right down the the like the barrel of the crossbow, and it's got that ornate gilded lion. Like right at the tip okay, where the bolt okay, comes out. Okay, so this this is a poetic bow in more ways than one. It was her son's bow, then it was used to kill her father, and now she wants to kill her traitor brothers with it. Exactly, so. exactly. And Bronze that fucking killed me. <laughs> yeah, Bronze reaction. So good, man. You can always count on Bron to have some amazing yeah. lines. Um, and I'm like, run away, Bron, just go. And uh, at this point, yeah, Kyburn starts to stick up for Cersei, saying that even after he was expelled from the Citadel, she's rewarded him handsomely for serving her and and serving her well. He thought he would die poor and alone, but look at him, hand of the king or hand of the queen, right? And so he's like, what would she do for the man who rid her of her treasonous brothers? And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm it's like, mm, yeah. I and he holds out the crossbow. And Bronn slowly takes it as like a taking the crossbow is sort of like a, it's saying, I accept the contract. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, man. Like, what what good is that gold going to do when the dead come and kill everybody? What horrors are you even going to be? paying for at that point everybody's gonna be dead dude i'm like dude so do you think this means that braun is going to head north i hope so i hope he takes the money and runs like steve miller band and you know <laughs> like <laughs> heads up north with all the, the, the gold um but that could be his undoing you know she'd definitely send people after him in that case if she survives yeah she's gonna survive at least until Long, at least long enough for Bron to make his decision, you know. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Nice. So yeah, that's uh, that's it for my number two. What about your number okay. one? Mm, let me see. My number one is John. Is John finds out that he is Aegon Targaryen. Well, sixth of what his do you name. know? Same here. <sighs> Yes. I, oh. How could this not be our number one? So I 
I thought maybe they would wait an episode for this re- revelation. Yeah, I, I um, figured it had to come immediately because Bran said, like, we have to tell him. So as soon as John arrived home, Bran was going to waste no time in, in yeah, getting the word and to I, him. When Bran, like, stops the pleasantries at the, the meeting outside, I I knew at that point that we would probably have this scene, but before it aired, I thought maybe they would wait like one episode for it. Right. It would have made sense. Have it be... So, but once he like kind of cut everyone off and he's like, we have basically no time for this pleasant t- pleasantry bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like we have to get down to business. Your dragon is undead. The army is on its way. The wall has fallen. Uh, I knew in that moment that we were going to find out that, or John was going to find out that he's a Targaryen. And I'm so glad that it was Sam that told him. I thought maybe it was going to be Bran and it would have been like this really unemotional scene because oh. Bran is so like robo Bran. You are really Aegon Targaryen. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm glad that Sam was the one to kind of help him through processing this ridiculous revelation. Yeah, that was really cool. And I also liked um, <laughs> that, or I, I, I not necessarily liked it, but I was concerned because Sam had just found out the truth about the toasted Tarleys, you know, the toasted Tarly truth. And uh, so he, he was mad at Daenerys. And as we saw, he encouraged John to... Um, to take his rightful place as king in the nor- of the seven kingdoms, so he's he's mad at Danny. He's encouraging John to assert his position. I'm ho- I was it, it, it kind of made me nervous. Like there's a, it's like a perfect storm of things coming together, where John realizes that Danny roasted his best friend's family. You know, he learns yeah. that he is the, the the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. He learns that. Danny is, is is also his family. There's all these things that could potentially get between the two of them and and create problems. You know, it's just it's. Oh, I think it's going to be. I think you know, next episode, Danny's going to find out, and I <sighs> think that might be even harder in a, in a weird way for her to take because she's for the longest time thought that she's the last Targaryen Mm -hmm. and that's quite a hard pill to swallow her whole like it's not only you're the last Targaryen but now you're not the last Targaryen and on top of that he's the rightful heir because he's a male yeah and it's like fuck you know and he's from the like the closest in the in the line like uh, like it would every one of Rhaegar's kids would have to be dead before it goes to Danny, you know. So it's not yeah, only that he's yeah. a male; even if he was a female, he would still be in the ahead of in the line of succession, technically. Yeah, so crazy. So it's just like I think it's going to be a really tough pill to swallow for Danny. It's really tough for John, obviously, which we get in this scene. But I think she is not going to take it very well. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. And so <laughs> fuck we, you, we, HBO. We, we, <laughs> mind blown um so i love there's a little bit of comedy throughout like woven throughout this whole episode i feel yeah lots of Um, little moments little moments here and there like ned umber popping his head out oh that was so (laughs) cute "Hmm?" yeah or the the uh, montage of guys getting crossbowed in the head when theon attacks the boat and the the uh eunuch joke (laughs) Which is oh, like what we start yeah. out the episode yeah, with. That's the so first funny. line of the whole episode. Um, so Sam falls down the crypt steps. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that. That was so cool. John's like, loved that. What the fuck was that? And you hear, oh, oh, oh. And he's like trying to get yeah, up. Yeah, we and- got lots of good Sam, like, oh, and like, oh, my, and things like that this episode. Like when he almost gets hit by that that horse and carriage right after he finds out the toasted Tarly truth and is walking yeah. down the steps, he's like, oh, yeah. like freaks out. Oh. So, um, you know, John runs up and well, first Sam's like, I'm sorry, I really shouldn't be down here. And John's like, fuck, whatever, like come over, give me a hug. Like, what the hell are you doing here? You're in you're in Winterfell, you know did you read all the books? Like, what's up? Like, why are you here? And he sees that Sam has been crying. Um, there is like a little tear still left on his face. He's definitely been, yeah, he looks like he's, Mm -hmm. Um, it's sad. 
So <laughs> John's like, well, were you hiding from me? <laughs> you in Winterfell? Uh, yeah, and so he asks about Gilly because I think he sees that he Sam sees is Sam a bit is fucked stressed. up, right? And he's like going down the Gilly list okay? of like the most important sim- things. Sam, and he goes, "You don't know, do you?" And John's kind of like, "Fill me in." Ugh. Daenerys, she executed <sighs> my father and my brother. They were her prisoners. She didn't tell you, and John's like, "Cause it." It doesn't seem like her character from his perspective of Danny yet. He knew that she flew down and roasted a bunch of people, but she, I don't think John realized that she actually like publicly executed people. It wasn't just like flying and killing soldiers and yeah. people exploding. This was like a targeted the word execute to me is a little bit more like personal than just flat out killing at random in a war setting. She, they, I mean, so, what is she going to do though? They took up arms against her. You know what I mean? No, like, I, I totally get it. So I, like Sam has to even understand on some level. I think he does, but Dick I, on I, though. Oh. I think that's really what hurt him was that his brother chose to follow his idiot father. I think that, and I, I think Sam is, He's pretty reasonable. He he gets the situation, but it's never easy to find out that a family member has been executed. I mean, it's not like they died of natural causes or died in the dragon fire as casualties of this war. She flat out burned them alive, which she had every right to do. She gave them a choice. And I think I think Sam will come to realize that, but he's kind of surprising john with this information i don't think john realized that she like publicly executed people in that so it's and he's kind of blindly in love with her right now and sure maybe surprised it's, that she had it in her to do that yeah i mean it's definitely also not her first time of doing this think about the guy uh, who no. was like her close advisor one of the slaves slaves who was freed from um yep. astapor um, I think. Yeah. And yeah, the, uh, or maybe he was slave. one of the Marinese actually. He was he was one of the Marinese. And uh after he's freed, he ends up advising her in Marine. And yeah, he he and he killed the that son of the harpy when he was Ma- in Mas- Massima or yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- Massimo something yeah, yeah. Massimo, Massima, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And she please, fucking please. She had yeah, she had Dario lop his head off in front of the crowd. And remember they all re- reacted hiss. Hissing at her. Oh, that was creepy. And well, John apologizes on yeah, her yeah, behalf. Actually, he's like, right. "I'm so sorry, but we need to end this war." Yeah, he's, like, he's like justifying it while apologizing at the same time. And uh, so Sam's like, "Well, well, would you have done it?" You know, <laughs> like and trying. John's to... like, "I have. I've executed men that have disobeyed me. I mean, this is this is kind of the." The other side of the coin from being a ruler, I mean, it's all, it looks great from the outside. You are worshipped, you're loved, you're feared, you, you know, inspire, but you also have to make these really difficult decisions. Mm. And one of them is if people take up arms against you, you're going to have to execute them. That's just (laughs) the way of this world. I mean. And Sam points out, like, well, even though you have executed people, you've also spared people, like the thousands of wildlings that refused to kneel. But then again, they just refused to kneel. They didn't, like, actively... I mean, at first they were battling the, the, the Night's Watch and everything, but it wasn't like... You know, eventually they were, like, seeking asylum, you know? Yeah. Like, we don't want to fight, just let us through the wall type thing. And uh, John's like, well, I wasn't a king back then, you know? And Sam, oh, like... but you were. Yeah, he starts to lose it, but you were. You've always been. He's like, I gave up my crown, Sam. I bent the knee. I'm not king in the north anymore. And... uh he starts like walking away, like agitated, and Sam is just getting more and more like frenzied. And he's like, "I'm not talking about the king in the north. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about the king of the bloody seven kingdoms." You know? Oh my god! And, and John, John stops like in his tracks. Yeah, stops he's like, dead. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. And just like, like, yeah, like in his mind, he's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" But he stays standing there, and, he, and Sam continues. Brandon and I worked it out. You know, he had. 
I had a high septum's diary. He had whatever he has. Whatever. He has <laughs> something. <laughs> he that, can download data anytime he wants. That brand computer syndrome. And he's, uh, all, he's connected to that Wi Fi. So John starts, he turns around and starts walking back towards Sam. And he's like, What are you talking about? Right. And Sam just tells him as plain as day Your mother was Lyanna Stark. Your, fa- your real father was Rhaegar Targaryen. Rhaegar Targaryen. And yeah. John, the look on his face, he's like, yeah, it was funny too. Right when he says your mother was Lyanna Stark, John John kind of goes <laughs> as if like, yeah, right, like, like, like they hooked up, like Ned and Lyanna. Hooked up. <laughs> I didn't even think about it that way, but <laughs> just like uh, like oh, you guys are like conspiracy theorizing about like ugh, like for some reason alternate John origin theories. He's like, we know I'm a bastard. My dad's Ned. Like, why do you what are you talking about, right? <laughs> and he He's goes never on. Never been a bastard. Yeah, he's like, oh my god, your real father was Rhaegar Targaryen. <laughs> You've never been a bastard. You're Aegon Targaryen, true heir to the Iron Throne. And okay, think about that. Your whole life, you have been known as Duncan McPherson and someone who is really close to you, like a best friend, all of a sudden drops this bomb on you that you are, you're not even who you thought you were. Like, I know exactly what I'd say. Neil, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But think about like what, like, what would your reaction be to that? Like, I... He okay, stumbles so my, backwards. My parents aren't my parents. Okay, uh, whatever. But I, I'm not Jon Snow. I'm a totally... I'm Aegon my first Targaryen. Name, like, I'm not even Jon Targaryen. Like, he literally I'm knows. Aegon and this is this is that moment where I talked <sighs> about where, like, there, we have the theme of Jon Snow knows nothing. And this is how <laughs> we learn here how little he really knows. Like, he literally knows nothing, even about himself. Nothing. You know, he doesn't even know his name. And this is uh, Jon Snow knows nothing. And plus the whole Jon Snow, John Doe type thing where, mm-hmm. like, you use John Doe to as a, as a placeholder for a name when you don't know the identity of a victim of a, of a crime, for instance. So it's yeah. perfect knowing nothing. And also the John Doe hint, like, combining those two together, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just like it's just so funny seeing him learn the truth and realize how little he knows about everything. So he's like, he uh, Sam's like, I oh, know, I'm sorry. It's it's, it's I know well, it's a lot to John take is in. Speechless, and, yeah, and he kind of like stands there just aghast, and he has of, that like, reaction. What just- yeah, like what? And what Sam's even? Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, like, it's, I a know lot. it's a lot. And then he starts walking towards Sam, and Sam's like, who? Yeah, like. Yeah, he gets like, all freaked out oh, for a second. He doesn't know how he's... shoot the messenger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so funny. And he, he sort of reacts just like I was worried he would. You know, when he learns that Ned lied to him, like he could... This figure who he's idolized, like, could instantly transform into somebody who's betrayed him horribly in his mind, you know? And so I was really worried about that. And he, he he's like, he, he, my father was the most honorable man I ever met. You're saying he lied to me all my life. My father was the most honorable man I ever met. You said he lied to me all my life. Your father, Ned Stark, he promised your mother he'd always protect you. And he did. Robert would have murdered you if he knew. I think it's funny that Sam says no here because... Yeah, he smooths it out amazingly. You know, it's like, well, okay, t- like, time out. Your father, will Ned Stark, he promised your mother that he would protect you. Robert would have murdered you, you yeah. if if anyone knew who you, know, you really true. were. Promise me, Ned. <laughs> yeah, and so... Oh, my God, and I think I mean, that... that's the, crazy. It's the best thing that he could have said, you know? Like, like he, the only reason he didn't tell you is because he promised your mother... You know, and it just like, it's just another example of of him being honorable, you know? Yeah. 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 So that makes John pause. He never like, well, I guess he lied in the fact that he told John that he was his father, but that lie was there to protect John from Robert. Yeah. He had had to, he had to have some origin. It was his duty because he promised to Leona to keep him safe. And that was the really the only way that he could do it. And yeah. he even yeah. he even tainted his own name 
to have a bastard. Honorable Ned Stark has a bastard son. I mean, he was dishonorable to his wife and the promise that they made. Like, he wore that, like, bruise on his heart. It strained his marriage with Kat all to protect John. So I think the way Sam worded it showed John that, yeah, he may have, like, technically lied, but he did it to keep his honor and yep. he even and to k- protect like, you, you know, he, more yeah, importantly, to I, protect family. I think that this really worked because the John's anger that seemed to flare briefly for that prior moment subsides. Well, he like he starts stepping back a little bit. Yeah, no, he, like, like takes a couple steps back. He stumbles backwards. He, he's like your your father. You know, Robert would have murdered you if he knew you're you're the true king, Egon Targaryen, sixth of his name, protector of the realm, all of it, all that bullshit, all of it. And John kind of like, like literally stumbles backwards. You're the true king. Aegon Targaryen, sixth of his name, protector of the realm, all of it. Titles, titles, titles. Well, it was like that burst of like the titles. I think it was almost like this wave. Overwhelming. (laughs) And the contrast of that compared to this is Jon Snow. King in the North, it's you know, King <laughs> <in the> North. <laughs> and now he's got all these titles and yeah. And I think he's like stumbling backwards and shock in his face. I think he's and, about ready to pass out. Yeah. Like all these pieces I would are connecting out. in his mind. Like he has to be thinking about all these things, like how, like think, and, and we get the, we get the Game of Thrones theme softly coming in, like the same version that they played when snow was falling over was Winterfell. Say, it's the same one when Jamie leaves yeah. Winterfell or not Winterfell, uh, King's, Landing. King's, or, Landing. Yeah, King's Landing, snow falling over King's Landing. Oh yeah. God. And so, um, I, I thought it was really interesting, like. All of this secrecy surrounding his birth, why Ned refused to talk about his mother in context with this information. Now, all of this makes sense. He's John has to be wondering, why didn't Ned just tell him, you know, just why didn't he? Why couldn't he just tell him who his mother was and be honest with him? And now well, I think he was going to once after he exactly, joined the Night's exactly. Watch, and yeah. he had to abandon his name when he was out of I the reach of the think- king. Yes, I truly think that if Ned were to be alive and they were to see each other again, he would have told him the truth. Yeah, exactly. Because he, he was protected by the Night's Watch at this point. He had to forego all of his names. Yeah, he, and he's out of the reach of the king's justice. The king doesn't yeah. have the power to issue justice against people of the Night's Watch. It was a moot point at that point once he took the black. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. It's like... Mind blowing. So, like, there, John's th- like stumbling, thinking about all this stuff. Just like has to be converging in his mind how the dragons just like him, and he was able to just ride a dragon, you know, and how he, um, like, the secrecy surrounding his birth. Now it makes sense, and he 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 knows that, like, he believes Sam when he says Robert would have killed you, and so he's probably putting the pieces into into his mind. He knows that the last thing that J- Ned ever said to him, you know, when they met was, next time we see each other, I'll tell you about I'll your tell mother. I'll you about your mother. Right? So he must be realizing, oh, well, he, that makes sense, because I would have joined the Night's Watch, I would have been out of the reach of the King's justice, and I would be safe, and the truth would be safe to tell me. So I feel like He's just thinking about all these things and he's realizing like, wow, this is fucking true. Yeah. And also he, he knows Danny's story because she kind of like comes at him and uh, at Dragonstone about like following, getting like basically running her entire life from assassins being mm-hmm. sold like property. So he knows that Robert tried to, throughout all of Danny's childhood to kill her. Yeah. So it's totally Tr- under, like, like he's like, oh he man, he would have tried to kill me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. think about that. So, like we got John starting off as a bastard and rising to a king organically. We have Danny starting off as a like a, a princess in in hiding um and being yeah. sold to a slaver or to a to a warlord and then rising to a, being a queen organically. They're perfect parallels to each other and it just makes perfect Again, sense it's that like, yin and yang it's yeah. that ice and fire and, and they just and of course john with like he we get 
right off the bat here when he learns the truth there's an element of the classic archetype of the reluctant hero you know when when obi-wan is our queen yeah yeah exactly obi-wan hands luke skywalker the lightsaber and luke's like ah i don't know ben you know i gotta stay home at the moisture farm with uncle owen over the summer and you know what I mean? like, reluctant to take that step onto his path of destiny and here john's trying to say no daenerys is our queen and sam's like she shouldn't be and john and then john's like but that's treason yeah oh my god it's Sam's it's like truth. no it's the fucking truth and this like, is like it's the, not treason if it's the truth and this yeah and this is like the big moment here where everything gets flipped upside down and like reality mm-hmm. is being challenged like the whole state of of the world is being que- put into question here as sam says you gave up your crown to save your people would she do the same, you know? And it's like, are you your feelings equal? For, I think... Do you think I, she would? I think she would. I mean... I do too. The BU students, I, when they wrote their, their version of season eight, which thus far is very different than than oh, really? the HBO version. Okay. Yeah, which makes me happy because I, I feel like I could watch more of the BU thing without being spoiled, you know? Sure, <laughs> so sure, uh, sure. they predicted that she would bend the knee to John willingly, that she hmm. sort of like thinks about it and and um, like decides to do the honorable thing, I think. Um, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with, with that. I think, I think she'll be... She'll freak out at really first. Surprise and a little bit resistant. Probably like the way Sansa's reacting to her right now. Yeah, and angry and yeah. confused. I mean, her and whole upset. life, like she's been doing all of this because she believed that she would sit the Iron Throne. Everything she's done is leading exactly. to this end goal. And now the person that she loves is turning upside down her whole end game and take stripping her of everything that she thought she was basically and will she be able to take that blow to her ego like john did and and choose what's more important so we have one character who thought he was a bastard his whole life and learns that he's the legitimate heir to the iron throne and then we have another character who's thought their whole life that they were the legitimate heir to the iron throne and learns that in fact that they are not so we have these two characters these yin and yang characters that stories parallel each other each having opposite revelations of identity one realizing their identity is much more significant than they thought it was another one realizing that they're lower on the totem pole at least in their family than they thought they were um, at least according to you know the traditions of the land so it's crazy to we're, it's gonna be interesting to see how each one reacts which one takes the news better you know <laughs> and it's probably not gonna be danny but she is about the people. That's been her story arc this as well. Whole time. And the same thing with John. Like he, like in this episode, he's like, I had to choose between between you know my crown and the north, and I chose I chose the north, right? So yeah. it's yeah, it's the same type of scenario. She's going to have to choose. It'll take her a little bit of time to get to that like relinquishing of that title, but she knows deep down in her heart that it's right. It's the right thing to do, and that she's gonna do it because of that reason and maybe maybe it'll take a little bit of Varys coming in because we we got that you know uh conversation last season when she says Varys if I'm ever like not doing what's right for the people I want you to come and tell me yeah. and maybe oh, it's gonna take man. all of them to convince her like that's a good good call I, I hadn't thought about that it could be Varys could be a big part of this like i worked with your father you know like if, if you got to be true to your house true to your name like yeah. i know you, you i you knew rhaegar to, you the have honorable to thing. let it go but then i think in some bravery that john is going to sacrifice himself to save danny so it's all pointless anyways because she'll sit the iron throne <laughs> If there is one, it may be right. Sansa. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I'm just waiting for Cersei to die. That's <laughs> all I really want. In yeah. life. <laughs> so Matt mentioned earlier, like these big deaths that we wait seasons for and how like we get to finally the purple wedding and Joffrey gets killed and we're all like, yeah. yeah. Like, ah. And uh, so are we going to get that moment for Cersei? Are we going to get that or is she going to live? You know what I mean? Like, are we going to get it? Uh, Nobody's safe. Is Cersei safe? uh, (laughs) I don't think anyone's safe. 
It really depends, I think, on what happens at the Battle of Winterfell. I think a lot of the propulsion of the rest of the series is going to oh, I mean... rely on who survives that, if anyone. Because um, if no one survives it, then maybe Cersei will survive. Or maybe everyone dies. It's so hard to tell at this point. Like Matt did say, um, this this episode was not really about propulsion of the story other than John finding out his true heritage. Mm-hmm. It was more of just reunion and setup. So I think next episode we're going to get more story propulsion. And my God, this episode moved really fast. Really, really fast. And so with no story, minimal, I'll say minimal story propulsion. I'm excited to see how fast it moves, but I'm also a little concerned that it's going to move so fast that we lose some of the, um, what makes the show so great is like the little nuanced details. Well, if, if this episode is any indicator, we're still getting lots of good little nuances. Oh, for sure. For sure. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Is there anything else that you want to add to this? Because I wanted to talk a little bit about some um, transitions that I noticed. Yeah, that's it for me for this. Go for it. Okay. Um, The first one was Cersei. I noticed when Cersei is leaving the throne room, she says to Euron Greyjoy, she goes, I've executed men for less. And... Euron says they were lesser men. Huh, and then yeah, and the cool. next scene is Braun. And oh, I thought shit. to myself, she's talking about executing people. And the next scene we get was Braun. Don't do it, so, Cersei. Um, the other little transition that I noted, and I'm sure once we've seen the whole series, I'll discover more. But yeah, definitely. when Sansa... Um, is talking to Tyrion on the ba- the Bannermans, and she says, "I I thought you were the cleverest man I had ever known." And then it <sighs> cues to Bran looking up at Tyrion, like now Bran's kind of the most clever person because he knows everything. <laughs> so yeah. I thought that was kind of a funny mm. little transition, but that's all I really picked up on transitions for. For now, maybe as more episodes come out and air, I'll go back and rewatch these to see if there are any other ones that are telling. But I'm sure there they're are. Sneaky. Yeah, they're so sneaky. They're sneaky this episode. I think you underestimate my sneakiness, sir. Yes. So uh, do you want to move on to notes? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll drive these notes. Yeah. I know we went through a little bit of my number three, but I did want to mention that I loved the just rows and rows of unsullied. I felt that looked like a lot more than 8,000 oh, when they're arriving unsullied. at uh, Winterfell? Yeah, that looked like a lot more than 8,000 unsullied. Interesting. Like, out in the background and stuff. So they were in a formation. I'm assuming they were unsullied, but um, I love the little commentary with Varys and Tyrion about balls freezing off. And yeah. Varys, it- dude, you you can make eunuch jokes, but no one else can make dork <laughs> jokes. Like, why is that? Because <laughs> like, I still Tyrion's, have my balls. I have balls, and you don't. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So, like, you yeah. it, 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 basically, it's just saying like it sucks when somebody's making fun of you for something, but like you can enjoy it when somebody else is the the target. <laughs> yeah, and um, we do get that kind of cold feeling. Like, there's no cheering. People are kind of staring. Missandei feels super uncomfortable. They're just kind of glaring at her. You can tell that it's not really a, a happy um, march into Winterfell. Mm. And Don, John does say, you know, I warned you, the, the Northerners are weary to outsiders. They don't trust the outsiders. And then that's when we get the dragon. And I found it really interesting that Danny smiles here. I wasn't quite sure how to like feel about that smile maybe as the dragons just, flew over. Maybe she was just happy to see her dragons and she was like, ah, my children. I know, but like people are like freaking out. They're starting to scream. They're all afraid and she's smiling. I just felt that it was kind of a misplaced emotion yeah. from her part in an interesting like act a little bit just so you don't look like a crazy person yeah i mean maybe her it's dragons okay have people not... it's okay people yeah it's okay <laughs> like, 
Don't be. They're not. We're not here to like roast you alive. We're just here to save your lives, you know. But I found that kind of an interesting take. I think what we're seeing though is Danny and John are extremely happy right now. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. they're in love. They're coming to save the North. They're united. <sighs> they have John is bringing like all this power to save his people, to save the world. And Danny for once feels like this is the Things right match for her. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not a cell sword. It's not like some fucking crazy warlord. Yeah. I mean, she did end is, up really loving called Drogo, but when King of the North, like, she knows that she needs to marry somebody um, yeah. of a great house. And, and this is somebody who matches her ideology. You know what I mean? Somebody yes, who exactly. saves people and who has saved the wildlings and brought the Northern houses together. They've both experienced like um, supernatural And being going from being low to being raised up and not losing like, you know, that, that Their humanity. connection to, yeah, to the, to the small folk type thing. Yeah. So I think that also might be the reason why she smiles a little bit here. It's just nice, nice mug right. there. Dude, the others. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but so I think it's really hard to like, um, I guess, con- condone her for smiling here. I think she's happy that they yeah. have arrived. That her dragons are she here. She sees like the man a combination. Loves. She's like Winterfell and my dragons, and we're together, and it's just like we're, everything we're we could hope for. It's you know? working, yeah. and I'm still alive on this horse. No one shot me with an arrow yet. So this naturally, of course, makes me nervous for their whole situation because you can't be happy on Game of Thrones. So yeah, some some so wrenches can be thrown in the in here. We fast forward a little bit because I know we talked a little bit about this in my top three, but. Um, I love the way Danny approaches Sansa. You know, it's like, it's really, thank you. It's really great to be here. Your home is beautiful. You're beautiful. And yeah, that was great. Sansa, she's like, yeah, Danny's like legit, like characters. smiling and like bubbly, like, oh my I God, and you're Sansa's so beautiful. Being, sh- I would love to like cosplay Sansa, but I'm not sure I could do that resting bitch face like <laughs> she does because I don't really have a resting bitch face most of the time. <laughs> I'm usually smiling. So um, it, it was just so cold. And I mean, obviously, Danny felt it because she talks to John about it later. But Ooh, yeah, you know, after, after a couple more interactions with Sansa that prove that, yeah, Sansa's not quite on board yet. Like, we'll get yeah. to that one in the Great Hall in a little bit, too. That was a great yeah. one. So that's all I really wanted to bring up a little bit more. Um, Nice. In my number three, but we can we there's can move a, on to know. There's one more thing there that's worth mentioning too. John sees Bran, and Bran is the first one that John approaches oh, when he arrives, <laughs> and he kisses him on the forehead like he's still a little kid, you know, which is so funny. And look uh, at you. Yeah, you're a, you're man. a man. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like it, John sort of looks like quizzical, like huh, like unsettled. And by he that. looks up at Sansa, and right? She's just like. I mean, like this, com- me. this comment would make sense typically because it, he, he could easily be saying like, well, I'm almost fully grown, you know, almost a man. Right. But it's he's not at like all what he's saying. Man. He's like, I'm yeah. almost a man, but I am partly a three eyed raven computer, you know, <laughs> download data. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've already seen this happening. <laughs> yeah. So um, he. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so moving yeah. on to notes, what's, what do you got first for notes? I have when we're in the like the um, Winterfell and they're talking to all the northern lords. There's one thing before that, too, which we forgot about, which is Bran and Danny um, talking for a split second when Danny's speaking with Sansa and Sansa's kind of being a bitch. And Bran interjects, we, we don't, don't have, have time, time for all for this. this. The Night King the has, Night your King dragon. has your dragon. He's one oh, of them yeah. now. And... Yeah. Oh my god. The look on <laughs> the look of horror on Danny's face is like it is like Yeah, she it's like, that's she, horrible. Like he's it, she it's hard just to watch him die, but now he's like undead. worse than death. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like uh she hadn't really considered it because she seems like shocked and horrified to to find out yeah. this horrible truth. Um you just gotta really feel for it. it sucks, you know. You you're horrible. Yeah. Definitely. And um, the brand further states the wall has fallen. 
the dead march south Chekhov's wall has come to the ground people and that was oh cool God. another thing that i liked about the new opening intro sequence was uh like that big huge hole in the wall big and we start we usually start down south and yeah. it kind of makes its way up north um that sequence and this now time, we're yeah. starting from the north and it's making its way so down south mirroring and we really only got a couple places dude how cool is the the red keep though in the dungeon with the Valerian skull. I know and, Valerian like, and snapping going together. Into, yeah, going into the throne room and the oh man, we got such a cool view of the throne room in this episode too. It's all dark and dim, and Cersei has it lit up with the the fires around the bottom of the pillars. How did you feel about the changing of the opening sequence? Um, it was kind of surprising that they decided to do that in the last season, but honestly, I feel the same way. But doesn't I love bother it, me at so all. I, yeah, I feel kind of like nostalgic. Like I wish they would have just kept the original one because sure. it's been that way for but, all seven seasons. But then again, two years this off. Is the final, yeah, yeah this and is they're the coming final back season. with like back and bigger and better than before yeah. and so I, I felt like the graphics really for the opening them. scene were so crisp this time oh, yeah 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 I don't they even... were am- it was amazing i i have no complaints of how it looked or the way it flowed but i just i sure, was like I, feel you. I was waiting to see like the way it usually is and i was like oh, i was just entr- entranced <laughs> by it all like whoa this is like, yeah, and I love that I loved little like, I, ice trail. I yeah, think the little tiles spread. flipping, flipping, the flipping. The farther is... and farther south they go. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Spreading down I hope so. And... That I hope could so be too. the main well, reason I see for them changing the intro is because they're like typically, whereas they would change like one, one or two things here, I think maybe we'll get like more drastic changes in the intro yeah. this whole time. Every episode I could see something like pretty different yeah. and more expanded than the last one. Yeah. Um, so next, yeah, we're moving into the Great Hall, right? And uh, yes. Sansa is talking about how the wall has fallen, and she's called all of our, their banners to retreat to Winterfell, and she calls Lord Umber, who <laughs> pops his head out. <laughs> Another little Me? comedic moment <laughs> the, the, in this episode. <laughs> love that. And so I she- love, I love it too because he goes, "Yeah, we need a little bit more wagon, if it please, my lady and my lord." And my queen. <laughs> Poor little guy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. And they all kind of like nod, like, it's okay. You know, you you can have as many wagons and stuff as we can spare. Just hurry back to the last hearth so you can get murdered. Yeah, fuck. And strung up on a... Uh, that's one of the cool things about this episode, too. Like, full circle, starting and almost ending with Ned Umber as well. Um, poor yeah. little guy. I know. So, John, I, it never even occurred to me, let's get the Night's Watch down here because the wall is gone, essentially. It's not protecting us anymore. <sighs> we need all the fighters we can. Send ravens. We need them all here. We're, we'll make our stand here at Winterfell. Like, they're not retreating. They're going to stay and fight. We will stand and fight. <laughs> can't wait yeah it's gonna be so awesome oh man um then we get leona mormont oh yeah she stands up and steps out of the crowd but you're not i don't even know like what you are i i think she was gonna say bastard and she caught herself really you think so oh man i didn't think that at all i thought she was like what are you now if you're not a king like you know, she goes to say the the letter B if you watch her, really? and then she goes, yeah, and she goes. That's when she says, I, I don't know what to call you now, like, but you're not. And then I, she was gonna say, a lord, you're a- nothing yeah. at all, nothing yeah. at all. I was like, oh my god, yeah. Liana Mormont calling Jon Snow nothing at all. Damn, yeah. li- little lady she Liana was the one throwing that named shade. Him King in the North. Yeah, I mean, she, now she's she throwing. She started that. For a little girl, she is casting massive amounts of shade here. Danny's <laughs> huge shadow. Like, damn, 
like even the little girls are salty up in the north. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. Men. I was so like Danny's looking at her like. Yeah, I was so surprised by this? Liana. I missed Danny's reaction entirely. I try. So the first time I watch it through, I just watch it with my natural like where my eye goes, and then wherever my eye doesn't go, the second time I watch it is where I try to force my eye to go the other places nice. that I'm not paying attention to the first watch. So the Good second plan. time I watched it, I, I look in the background, like who's in this, who's behind the scenes, um, who's behind, who are we seeing? Like what's kind of happening, who, what's going on around what the camera is focusing on mm -hmm. because like, that's where like last episode I talked about Varys being like a comedic factor in the, the big meeting he's really not an upfront person. And if you're just watching the people that are in focus on the camera, you would miss his reactions. So yep. I do like trying to pay attention to the, the what's going on behind the main character. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. And so John says to her, it's not important. My title, like it's not important at all. And Leona's like, well, it basically she's saying it is to us because we named you our king. Right. They, it's really they, important to us. They still don't quite get it yet either. Like the Northern Lords, they finally accepted the wildlings. They're not quite ready yet to accept the Southerners as well that they just got their freedom from. <laughs> but but like the fact that they're hesitant now makes sense for the Northern character. And I think sure. that they are going to wise up and uh, eventually come to uh, embrace their their fellow men in the battle for life. I think so I think eventually, especially like Davos says a little bit later in this episode, Danny just needs to basically prove her worth up here. They're not just going to blindly follow her. These are stubborn asses up here. Mm -hmm. It's going to take something to get them to follow her kind of the way it took something for John to follow her. I mean, he wasn't going to bend the knee, but then she came north and saved his ass. She lost a dragon for him and saved him. So he bent the knee to her. So it's kind of the same thing. They're not just going to like say, oh, come in, Daenerys Targaryen. Welcome to our home. You, you got to like show up and do some work here, girl. Yeah, like, definitely. Definitely. That's how I feel. So, um, John, to John's point, you know, it was really honorable that you guys made me your king, but I told you when I left, I went to go get allies. Oh, I loved how I he said it was the allies home. Uh, yeah. And I loved how he said it was the honor of his life too. Like that's yeah. a significant statement. It was the honor of my life, you know, like of course it, it, was. Meant, it meant something. I'm not just like, I didn't sacrifice that for nothing. Like this is important, yeah. you know? But I chose, instead of keeping my crown, I chose to protect the North. I chose the North. I don't yep. give a fuck what you guys call me. I don't care who, who's a Lord and who's a lady and who's a grace and who's not. We, the, we can sort all that bullshit out right. if and when we survive. I chose the North like, over my title. That's what matters yeah. is saving yeah. you, helping all of you guys survive. And so Tyrion tries to make things better. I thought Tyrion was like kind of brave to stand up here so brave like, wow right he and john kind of like looks over at him danny kind of looks at him and he gives john some major credit look if we survive we have to give our thanks to john snow he risked his life to show the southern basically all of the southerners that this threat is real and he, he yeah and he gave his life to save the wildlings <sighs> you know people are so <laughs> like i don't it's so hard for me to wrap my head around the the northern thought process about like <laughs> the the like oh well he's a lord and you're a grace and it's like no one there is an army of dead people like five days from our doorstep right like, yeah let's let kind of just like curb this conversation until we survive like totally. please totally so he um, he has a good yeah. point like you know we have to thank john who made this possible now instead of just being you guys alone we have the biggest most powerful army the world has ever seen showing up to have your backs guys like be cool with that because it's super cool of us to do um and we have two fucking giant full-grown full-grown dragons and then he kind of pauses and like gives like this shifty eye look and he <laughs> you know and he's like he's like and the lannister army will be joining north joining running north to join us as well so. 
and everyone's like what the fuck yeah and he's like like even he knows like i'm like dude you're trying to help but that's not a good thing to say to help no and but like, he has to tell him because could you imagine if the lannister yeah. army just like showed up out of nowhere right it sucks though they said it because he's wrong and they're not going to be showing up know, so he like he created all this tension for something that's not even going to happen but um it's pretty interesting right after the revelation last season in the finale that Littlefinger was the beat behind the Stark and Lannister conflict in the first place. You know, that that whole fight between the two houses started because of falsehoods spread by Littlefinger. I was thinking maybe that they can, you know, work to put their differences aside after that. But then again, quite a bunch of gnarly stuff happened since then, you know, like yeah. <laughs> between the actual two houses. <laughs> So even if the initial conflict was started based on a lie, uh, there really was bloodshed after the fact, you know? Yeah. So it's going to be hard for them to get past that. Yeah. So Sansa, again, with that stick up her ass, may I ask how many, how we're meant to feed the greatest army the world has ever seen? While I ensured our stores would last through the winter, I didn't account for Dothraki, Unsullied, and two full-grown dragons. What do they even eat anyway? And I love Danny kind of putting her in her place. She yeah. looks over at her. She's like, whatever they want. Yeah, like, <laughs> whatever they want. We don't have a choice. So she's, the- <laughs> she's, she's like looking forward when she says it, whatever they want. And then she turns to grill Sansa. And I was like, oh, man. So Arya telling John. um, don't forget that you're in the family too. That was the most shocking moment for me. This was the most badass moment for me. You yeah, know, yeah. where Danny is just it. like, dragons eat whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. You should know that. Like, you know, what did you didn't get the memo? Stop being a snarky little bitch. Yeah, like, like we'll devour you if we want to. You know what? If you don't want our help, I'll just take them all home and you fuck you guys. Like, that's what I'm trying to like understand Sansa's being a little too proud here and we knew this was gonna happen though oh totally I I think it's because she's uncomfortable about the situation because she knows she knows that they're related I think she realizes when they walked up together that they love each other yep she's had tension with John in previous episodes you know so there's a lot to work out here there's a lot going on um I don't blame her, but at the same time, your king bent the knee to this queen and you have to show a little bit more respect. Yep. Like totally. Let's, let's, Unless you want to be like starting a fucking war. Yeah. Like I just feel like, okay, she does a really good job of being Lady at Winterfell. I really love the character that Sansa's become, but she's going to get put in her place. Yeah. She's got to wise up to the big picture, you know? They might have a heart to heart. It might be, or it might just be that Danny just has to prove her worth and save Sansa somehow or saves the North somehow. Mm. And then they yeah. can kind of come together. I can see that too. You know, so mm-hmm. we'll see. So next we see Gendry unloading dragon glass at Winterfell. And this is exciting, man. They're taking this dragon glass and smelting it and melting it down it. and forging it. Yeah. And he made a badass you know, axe for the hound. And I was thinking, hmm, Gendry's a smith. He's now forging dragon glass. I was thinking maybe he's going to do some experimenting and try mixing steel and dragon glass together Mm -hmm. to forge dragon steel, maybe like a modern iteration of dragon steel. But what if like that doesn't work on the enemy? It's worth a shot, you fun. know, they could try it. He could be like, well, you know, they could be being overwhelmed and have like little options. And he's like, well, you know, I, I we're fucked, but I made these prototype weapons we can try, you know, <laughs> and it could save the day. <laughs> so that That's was funny. really cool. I liked um, this is when Tyrion goes to speak with Sansa and um there he's glad that she's still alive and he's like lady of winterfell that's fucking awesome you know and and she's like hand to the queen that's pretty cool uh depending on the queen you know still being a kind of a bitch 
And uh, they connected about the wedding. Last time they spoke was at Joffrey's miserable affair, Tyrion says. And that's the moment that Matt mentioned where it had its it moments. Its moments. <laughs> so good. And Tyrion kind of has to smile right. at that because he hated Joffrey. Yeah, there's one th- one big thing that happened at that wedding that they both could appreciate for sure. But Sansa sees that he's kind of lost in thought here. And I do appreciate that she apologizes for just like... Yeah, leaving she leaving him with an utter mess to to clean up. Not only an utter mess, she kind of realizes I think that she screwed him over and left him as mm-hmm. like a suspect, as in a very suspicious so. looking position. Um, so in, instead of like outright apologizing, she kind of apologizes by saying like, "We both survived, though, you know, like sorry." <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, Let uh, bygones be bygones. Yeah, and Tyrion says many of many people underestimated you. Most of them are dead now. I thought that was cool because we had that line where he said, you know, in like season two, you might sur- out survive all of us. You might survive mm-hmm. us all, Lady Sansa, right? Yeah. So uh, he he brings up the 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 Lannister army, and he's like, listen, I know, like it's told, like I understand you don't trust Cersei, you shouldn't, but she has a reason now to live and to fight. Um, which we may learn doesn't actually exist later in this episode. Um, he's talking about her, how she's pregnant. And uh, yeah. so Sansa's like, in, like she, you believe that she's going to come up here and fight? You know, that she's going to send her armies? I used to think you were the cleverest man alive. And I'm like, oh, man, ouch. And that, that leaves Tyrion completely speechless he's he's left yeah. in silence as she walks off and i'm just wondering what's going through his mind like contemplating if he has a blind spot with as in regards to cersei and the whole child situation he's being manipulated but uh i thought it was pretty impressive that she came to the conclusion and saw the truth of the situation that cersei was bullshitting a mile away like way before oh, totally. Tyrion even thought of this which is she knows amazing. Cersei. She's studied Cersei. She spent a lot of time with her, and she knows that Cersei is not. She hates Tyrion. Why the fuck would she send her army up here? Like, maybe Tyrion's the stupidest Lannister. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no, no way. <laughs> so she walks away, and that's when. Oh, I, I thought it was interesting too that the fact that she thought that he was the most clever man alive was interesting to me like that means that yeah. she considered him in high regard you know that's what that says to me so that yeah. that says to me that that means that he could prove that he is you know one of the most clever men alive by redeeming himself and doing something awesome and Good. that makes me think that they these two have the potential of actually getting together for real at some point Oh shit! Leo? Well, because Danny's Danny's off the radar now because she's with John, mm-hmm. and Tyrion saw that happen. I mean, he was in the boat with her, and watched John go in. So maybe he's turning his sights to back to Sansa. Maybe like the somehow. two the two leaders would be together. Then the two two of like the closest mm-hmm. advisors would be together. Yeah. Um, be quite a little powerhouse. It would certainly be a way to help unite the North. I mean, the Northern Lords have tr- become, come to trust Sansa. Um, mm-hmm. after everything that's happened and how she stuck, stood up for them and been there and helped get Winterfell back and everything. So maybe totally. maybe her being like, listen, you know, I trust Tyrion. That could do, go a long way or with I'm the Northern marry Lords. Him again. Yeah, 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 that could go a long way with the Northern Lords to uh, bring the North and the South together to unite them. And this is when Tyrion and Bran make eye contact, creepy Bran down at the... Uh, down there he's, looking up at him he's just so creepy I, I turned over like and looked at dave i'm like there's brand he's like creeping in every show <laughs> yep he's just rolling around winterfell like listening to everyone's conversation yeah oh I, speaking of rolling around i liked that too the first shot we get where we see that jamie sees bran we get jamie and and then it cuts to a shot from down underneath bran's wheelchair mm-hmm. and we see yep. just we see like the uh, the wheel in the view and then looking right mm-hmm. past the wheel to jamie and we see him like react and see bran sitting yep. there i thought it was just a really great it's shot like a double take he's like yeah what? <laughs> What? <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> totally. So that was really cool. Next, we yeah. go to a really short little scene in King's Landing with ominous music as Kyburn emerges from the blackness of the <laughs> wherever he, you know, lurks. <laughs> and and uh, terrible news. Terrible news. 
the dead have broken through the wall. And Cersei's and like, Cersei's like good. good. Yeah, what and the fuck is wrong with you? And even Kyburn seemed shocked by this reaction from Cersei because yeah. even he had said it was terrible news. So yeah. if Kyburn even is like, whoa, you know, it's got to be something fucked up, right? Yeah. And uh, this um, happiness that Cersei has about the dead coming south, I was thinking maybe that does foreshadow a willingness to ally with the Night King, you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, will, and that made me think, will we hear the Night King talk? Can he talk? Or is he going to, like, treat with Cersei? You know what I mean? It's just an interesting little idea we had. Totally. So, so it cuts then to Euron's ship, which is at Moor, and we see the big trireme style ram on the front and we see that the those big sails are out oh, but yeah. they're drawn yeah. so just the masks they're drawn in yeah and um we're with uh this is with with euron yeah why don't you just get it over with and and, and kill me and yeah he's like, no we're family we're the last Greyjoys without any ball or with with balls plus who would i have to talk to you know and didn't he cut the tongues out of all of his crew yeah, that's, that's that reference yeah i've got a crew of okay. mutes he says so he this that's is referencing that he cut the tongues out of all of the people on his ship which is wild because he needed silence his his ship is named silence oh man oh, so shit. so cool so uh, he's like, it gets lonely at sea. And uh, she's Yara. Like, are we at King's Landing? Yeah, she knows where they are. She's figured it out. And she's like, you're an idiot, man. You picked the fucking losing side with that well, dumbass queen. Then I'll bail and sail the Iron Fleet somewhere else. Yeah. But first, I'm going to fuck the queen. And I thought that was kind of maybe reading between the lines like well i'm gonna sail to the iron like the iron fleet somewhere else after i fuck like fuck her over yeah i'm gonna fuck like, her and then i'm gonna fuck he's her gonna over. fuck her and then he's gonna <laughs> fuck her over and leave love it that's, so that's awesome. what i kind of like took it as so that's great i thought that was kind of funny super funny nice i like that i, I mean that's basically what we've been saying too is that his eyes are really on danny the whole time you know yeah and I oh he's he's so gross scene, yeah like, <laughs> Well, we, we know that he has literally, but metaphorically, I think he's going to fuck her too. Yeah, I think so. So this is when we get to the throne room and it's Cersei with her honor guard and Euron is there with Harry Strickland talking about how they've successfully retrieved the Golden Company. 20,000, a few people died in transit, but, uh, you know, they cheated at dice or... Wait, maybe, maybe I cheated. Maybe I Someone cheated. cheated. Did you see uh, Captain Strickland's face? He just like shakes his head. Just, <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. Love it. That's so cool, man. And uh, yeah, I, I just thought that was such a funny line by Euron. Holy shit. Someone cheated. Maybe I cheated. Maybe they cheated. I, I don't lived. fucking know. I was probably drunk, so... Yeah, he's like, they're the ones who died. That's all that matters. You know, like, he's so they fucking creepy. They were good fighters. We won't miss them. And there's <laughs> yeah. just like, how many horses do we have? Like, let's move on 2000. to, like, the actual... But no, okay, no elephants. elephants, though. Oh, that's a bummer for us. Remember last episode? We, we got were some like... meta commentary in that, too. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, after yeah. they have sex, she's like, you really wanted those elephants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, because we were like, we want the dragons, we want the elephants, we want mm -hmm. the pack of wolves and the dire wolves, and we want, like, all this cool stuff. We just give it to us all. Krakens, you know, unleash the hounds, everything. Totally. Ice spiders, whatever. undead mammoths, giants. Like, we want because everything. That's disappointing. Yeah. I was told the, co the Golden Company had elephants, and he goes, well, they are excellent beasts, but... They aren't really good at going long distances on the water. Yeah, wild theory. So, maybe they're yeah, maybe they're telling us not to expect elephants breaking our, our hearts so that they can surprise us in another another way with some type of like extreme <laughs> creature that we're going to be exposed to. Like, yeah, we could have given you elephants, <laughs> but we're going to give you ice spiders instead. You know what I mean? That would be really cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so. Um, they move on, and uh, she's welcoming Harry Strickland. You're you're always welcome here. Thanks for all your service. And Euron's like, what about me? You know, like, I'm a true friend and honored guest. I was hoping we could talk in private, you know, as get well. A little, get a little freaky. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, after the war, that was our agreement. And he was, he was like, like, what the fuck? Wars, wars last years sometimes but I, in my head i'm thinking yeah yeah you knew that and you still agreed to it yeah you agreed yeah. to the terms you know so uh 
She has a funny line. I find this very a very funny line. Uh, which one? Well, she says, you want a whore, buy one. You want a queen, you have to earn her. And then, like, the very next thing we see is her letting him into her bedchamber. So it's like, True. are you calling yourself a whore? <laughs> well, and also, if she's exchanging sex in for his goods and services, that's, like, kind of the definition of... Mm-hmm. You know what a so whore I, is. I kind of chuckled at that because I know in the books she's a little bit more promiscuous. Yeah, yeah, for true. Yeah, Lancel and the Kettle Blacks and Moon Boy as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he he's being insolent, but she and she blows him off and starts walking away. But eventually, she does stop and turn back and turns back. I think and she realizes him. that if she doesn't like give him a little bit. That he could be a big he threat. Wants, he's going to bail. Yeah, like, he, he's in a position then, to screw her over, like you said, to fuck yeah. her over. So she's got to so, try to keep him. Yeah, totally. Agreed. All right. What's your next note? Um, next, um, I guess real quick, I just thought it was cool. We got that great close up of the mountain and his purple headed mushroom oh, yeah. top helm. <laughs> he's got like purple <laughs> skin and the mushroom top. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Juggernaut. Even that, that helm is sort of like hearkening to juggernaut's sort of onion shaped domish helm as well right yeah totally that's cool so next uh it's after they just had sex euron and cersei we see the deed is done yeah and then he started he's insulting robert you know that hey like how do i compare to that fat king like who cares how you compare (laughs) he's just like like being wild and then he's like asking about like how do i compare to jamie i know you guys have been doing that's really what he wants to know yeah he's just leading into it (laughs) breaking the ice with him you're not boring. Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> like, you that. like, what does she say to him? She's, uh, you're, you enjoy risking Slayer. your neck. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's too. like ballsy to say that. Like, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, so life is boring. She goes, okay, well, you're not boring. I'll so give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> not and, my brother, uh, but okay. He like puts his hand on her stomach. He's like, I'm going to put a, a prince in your belly, you know, and gets all crazy. And, and she, um, I think. She still, I think she is pregnant because so? when he walks away, it looks like right before they cut away from her, it looks like she's about ready to cry. Yeah, yeah, she's very sad. She, I like, was takes wondering that like sip and kind of like stares off, and then her eyes just ever so slightly like well with just slight tears, and she like looks down and she grimaces. Oh, like, I was, I was, I've been thinking about why, and I'm thinking maybe because the prince that she wanted in her belly is she wanted Jamie's prince in her belly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. if that prince is there, if she still is pregnant, like if she ever was pregnant, Euron might think it's his. Yeah, she, that Jamie's child could end up being passed off as somebody else's kid again, mm-hmm. which would be hey, like that's mm. what I thought was. Oh damn! Yeah. Like, oh my like, god. But is she even pregnant? You know, how much time has passed? Her hair is a little bit longer and she doesn't seem to be like really showing at all. You know, that's true. Um, it's hard to tell how much time has passed. I mean, it's been long enough for Jamie to get up to Winterfell. True. Yeah. So next. I mean, let's see. I didn't start showing really showing showing until middle of like my second trimester. So like maybe five months. It's when I started showing, but I had a really big belly. So I started showing early. Um, there's lots of women that don't hardly show at all. Like my friend, she was like nine months pregnant. She looked like I looked like when I was like three months pregnant. It's weird, but Damn, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. So we cut over to the bow and arrow. That's right. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, we just, just think. Pew, Boom. pew, Moonraker, all these guys getting taken out. That was a great little comedic montage with all those uh, Ironborn being shot in the head. Mm-hmm. So and good. And I loved it because as Theon has his bow again. He, like you said last episode. Oh my episode, God, that's a big symbol. Theon with a yeah, bow. Yeah, he was an expert oh, he was a hot marksman. Shot. He was a hot shot so with a bow. He's getting kind of back into his role of Theon Greyjoy. Remember, and... remember when he saved Bran? Yeah. And Rob shot was like... His- yeah, he shot you that guy like my brother. Yeah, but but Theon's an expert and he knew it, you know. So yeah. the fact that Theon is holding Trusted a it. bow again, that symbolizes that Theon Greyjoy is back. That not it's not 
somebody else. This is Theon. And he yep. like the door kicks open and the guy falls in and Yara looks up in astonishment. Last thing on earth she would ever imagine is she's kind of pissed obviously because she had <laughs> yeah. once he sets her free <laughs> loved it and but then immediately like it's like stannis you know cut your knuckles off for your smuggling but, you. but he'll <laughs> but he'll raise you to be a lord for like, for helping God him out damn it you fucked me over but i still love you <laughs> but you're now you're making up for it and like we're yeah. still on the same team and now we yeah. can move forward oh this is so good it's just like it was just so good he's redeeming himself with thar with yara much faster than i expected like i was saying all these things happening so much more quickly than i ever imagined the dragon we're getting are, the combinations like, back in one episode so we can just go full speed ahead the rest of the series i yeah, really think I mean, that's what this episode was yeah and there was lightning speed you know, already. I have mixed I have mixed feelings about it. I still kind of do. I wish there was a little bit more of like our traditional epicness. We just came off season seven. I mean, the last image we were left with it was the Night King blasting through the wall. I mean, that's pretty intense. And then we get to this episode and it's kind of a different vibe. It's a little bit happy. People are going on dragon joy rides. People are reuniting with people that they haven't seen for a long time. It just didn't have that game of Thrones feel to it, but I think we're going to get so much of that. The rest of this season, we might look back on this episode fondly mm -hmm. once it's over. The more we talk about it, I like it more and more. And like, I was kind of, I do um, like it. I, I was underwhelmed like last it. night because I was just, overwhelmed with all the technical difficulties of yeah. our brutally yeah. failed live stream and, <laughs> and everything like that We're figuring it out okay. I, I have it fixed i have the i have it fixed Good. So next we're we're on the ship with the two of them and as they're sailing away and Theon has saved her and um Yara knows that he wants to go north and fight yeah, with she John says, you know we can take back our home from Euron because he's preoccupied and you know Theon's like, okay, but we should probably go help Daenerys. And she's like, I know where you want to go. Why don't you go do that? I'll go take care of taking back um, the Iron Islands in case you guys need a place to flee if shit hits the fan at Winterfell. Yep. So they say their goodbyes. And I really love that he wants to go defend the Starks. Yeah. He wants to fight for the Starks. Yeah, and this is another hugely significant moment because at the last time we saw John with, with Theon, they were talking about his last name. And John was like, you don't have to choose. You're a Greyjoy and you're a Stark. So he got the blessing of the Stark patriarch, basically, to mm -hmm. like, you're, you're one of us, you know? And now he's redeemed himself in the eyes of Yara and he's received the blessing of the Greyjoy matriarch. You're also a Greyjoy. Right. And so now he knows he's, he's got comfort that he can be both a Stark and a Greyjoy and be with both of them. And, and he can choose his own path now and not feel like he's betraying one over the other. Now that Yara has told him, Go with your gut. Take the right step. Do what you feel is right. Go north. You know, it's a big moment. It, it solidifies what John began by giving him his, like, his, his you know, his last names. Totally. And Yara yeah. is just just solidifying it here and, and cementing it. And it's great. It's just a huge moment for Theon. She Theon's. says, what is dead may never die, but kill the bastards anyways. Yes. Like, yes. Yes, those undead <laughs> bastards. Kill them. Yes. So good. I thought that was a great line, too. Really poignant. Um, especially, you know, we've heard that theme coming through the episodes for some for so long. The, the uh, great mm -hmm. joy, the drowned god mantra, right? The words of the drowned yeah. god: what, "What is dead may never die." And now, where that that phrase is being thrust into having like a relevance to the overall concept of of the war of life and between life and death, you know, kill the bastards anyway. I thought that was so cool. It's really even great. Even though they're I love yeah, it. even though they're already dead, you can still try to kill them in this case. You know? Yeah, got to do it. So, mm -hmm. I think we're back up at Winterfell. Yep. And we're welcoming the Karstarks back into the fold. Yeah, Alice Karstark, right? Yep, one of the butter sigils. Yeah, beats, beats an onion. An onion. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Who says I can't argue with that? Yeah, Davos. Very, oh, Davos says yeah. that. Nice. It's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I mean, it's my sigil, but yeah, it's not the coolest. Well, <laughs> but it represents who I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they're talking about like loyalty and how 
like the Northmen are loyal to John because they know him, but she well, brought peace to their houses. Right, but t- Danny's going to have to earn it, like you were suggesting. And so Tyrion senses that he's that uh, he says, "I sense you're leading to a proposal." And Davos, a proposal is what I'm proposing. <laughs> Great line, dude. He's suggesting a marriage between John and Danny, and Tyrion's like, "Well, they do look great as a couple." Fuck, friend zoned, you know. He's friend zoned. Him and Jorah should start a club. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty, pretty funny little moment. Like, interesting that they're suggesting that, and then it cuts down to John and Danny, and they're talking about Sansa, and she's like, "Listen, like, she doesn't have to like me, but goddamn, like, show some respect." You know what I mean? Like you were yeah. saying, and now yeah. it's time for. Dan- for John to ride a dragon, you know what I mean? We learn oh that God. the dragons are barely eating and they go over there to see what's going on. And Danny hops on and she's like, come on, go come on, on. Let's go. And he's like, I don't know how to ride a dragon. He's, she's like, dude, Nobody you were does. just riding me last night. So I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> oh. Oh. <Hey-o. laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. And so he's like, well, um, well what if he doesn't want me to? <laughs> that, that was a well, funny one. It was nice knowing. You, from horses, you know, you know, buck your ass off, boy. Oh, yeah, so that's pretty he's funny. Fr- he's wigging, for yeah. Sure. Oh, so you, you're right. Her response but is I pretty funny. Yeah, she's, she's like, then, then I've enjoyed your company, Jon Snow. You got to figure it out. And so he, he climbs on, and she's like, hold on to whatever you can. And you can. I thought this was hilarious. Rhaegal takes off before John can even get fully situated. He just launches. And John's I like, oh. interesting because this is the first time someone's ridden Rhaegal. First time uh, anybody's Danny ridden a dragon other than Danny. Rhaegal. Yeah. I mean, typically dragons like, only accept one rider. Um, oh, like really? At, at okay. a time. Um, so this means that Rhaegal is John's mount basically at this point okay. uh, it's very belt. rare yeah very rare that you know uh, in while one while a rider a dragon rider is alive usually nobody else rides that dragon when the dragon Got rider it. dies then somebody else will take up the take mantle like a number of targaryen kings rode um balerion the dread for instance mm-hmm. um so this is cool. Oh, it was funny that it took off so quick because it reminded me of this time where I was sitting on a motorcycle on like a little motorized scooter, ring, 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 revving it up, and my friend's dad flicked it into gear and it like <laughs> launched, it, yeah, launched out from under me. And I had to bail off it. That was pretty funny. So um, they take off. They're flying around. Fucking amazing. Oh my god, I love it. And the Danny and John the theme scenery. is playing, and they're just it's soaring. Playing and it's like very like upbeat and. Yeah, Just and and it, everybody at Winterfell amazing. watches in amazement as Jon Snow rides a dragon past the battlements. I know, battlements. Barry's face, he's like... like what is happening? What, what did I just see? Dude, I mean, especially all these people like that have been around Danny before. They've been around Danny for years. Nobody else has ever ridden a dragon, and then John just no. shows up, and all of a sudden, he's like a, a, a dragon, dragon rider. I this know, is insane. Crazy. So and crazy. It's crazy. He's a Targaryen. Exactly, and I loved um, <laughs> John's line. He's like, "You've completely ruined horses for me," and. <laughs> yeah. It made me think, ooh, dragons are the bacon of rideable animals. <laughs> There's some commercial that's like, never add bacon to food. It will just ruin all food. It that's, ruins all yeah, food. That, that doesn't have bacon forward. forever. And then it, they say like Hulu is the bacon of TV or something like that. I don't know. So, so dragons are like the bacon of rideable animals, basically. And then they approach this cliff and and Rhaegal just dives vertically, nose dives straight down. Whistling down this canyon. Dude. It's amazing. And John is like, oh, you know, <laughs> just like holding on <laughs> for dear life. And uh, and yeah, at the last minute, Rhaegal like levels out and woo, the G forces at that moment were probably intense. Oh, they were so and intense. I love the flying effects like too, like his wings are flapping, but his body is also moving in the air. Mm-hmm. So it's not like his his torso is perfectly stationary with the wings flying around him. It's a realistic flight movement. And that means that John is moving up and down, up and down on his back. Literally. And he's got to be like, you know, like being God a launch like, Make it a little motion sick. Like if you think riding a horse is intense, it's like riding like a bucking 
Bronco for like, you know, well, however long the journey you, is. Have seen the behind the scenes? That's pretty much what they ride on. Yeah. It almost those, like, like those, that big simulator yeah, thing. Yeah, those bull riding it, it kind of like moves like a, like a bucking bull. Exactly, because the torso is not stationary in the air. It's moving up and down. And so the, yeah. like it's, it's like you got to show that to be, make it be realistic. They did an amazing job. They in really my mind. did. So they land at this so beautiful you land waterfall. At this waterfall. It looks oh, like there's man. a cave back there. I was too. thinking the same thing. Yeah. And she says, well, we could stay here for a thousand years. What did that remind you of? Egret? We should never leave this cave, Sean Snow. We should never leave this cave. <laughs> yeah. And so um, more John and Danny theme plays as John's like, we'd be pretty old. And and uh, she, it's cold up here for a southern girl. He's trying to get in oh, closer. So keep your clean warm. Yeah, and the Dan and Johnny theme plays as they start making out, and John is like and ki- kissing Drogon. her, but like yeah, he's like kissing her, but like opens his eyes mid kiss to see Drogon like hey, just like, perched over the top of him, and uh, it, it kind of reminded yeah. me like that awkward feeling when you're you're like having sex and your dog like somehow gets its way <laughs> into the room and it's like looking at you. What, what's, what are you guys doing? Yeah, and you gotta like you can you can shoo a dog away, but you can't shoo a dragon away you know like like danny said dragons eat whatever they want (laughs) yeah dragons will watch whatever they want too so drogon just posted up like looking down at him and damn like this this shot i used it for our feedback post this shot looking Mm -hmm. at drogon's face there like the graphics are so crisp like i don't know what it is this year the show looks more crisp than ever before it's amazing maybe it's because i'm watching on a different tv Maybe. I think Maybe. they're just more clear. They look more too. clear like, to Everything me too. just looks really, really crisp this year. Like yeah. amazingly crisp. Um, so yeah, I was really impressed by that. I noticed it in the intro scenes as well. The intro sequence, it just seemed like mm-hmm. you could see every little detail. So um, sure. they're doing their thing, making out. And then it cuts back over to the dragon glass smelting and forging. And this is when I was thinking about, ooh, maybe Gendry can make some dragon steel, which would be cool. So the hound accosts him. It looks like it's glowing, too. When they melt it, it kind of glows. Oh, yeah. I noticed that, too. Like, immediately, you could tell this is dragon glass. Something very special, for sure. Yeah, it's something we haven't seen before. And so the hound shows up, and he's, like, accosting Gendry. (laughs) It's pretty funny. And Gendry's like... Leave him be. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Arya stands up for him. Which is really cool. She defends Gendry, you know, because they 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 got along really well. They they had a good little relationship beforehand when she was heading north. And man, based on this scene, I could see a relationship like really developing between the two of these in the future. She gives him the eyes. Arya and Gendry. Yeah. Oh, they both they were both kind of like awkwardly looking at him. He, He's like, you look good. Yeah, he compliments oh. her looks, and she returns the favor, saying, "So do you." And uh, damn, like as she, she has him. She brings out this diagram of some device that she wants him to make, and it looks like almost like a dragon glass harpoon, like yeah, a, like a and casing it, like, with a sticks an in and then it shoots out. Yeah, I was thinking maybe that's to try to launch out to try to take out Reg, uh, Viserion, or maybe she could be like trying to like. You know, maybe she could be putting like put on the face of a, of a white or something and try to infiltrate close to the oh, night shit. king under the cover of being a dead guy and then like ah, stab him and run. <laughs> you know, um, maybe it's to try to get you would need it to be detachable for that. Yeah, I'm just wondering what what we need what we do need it to we'll be de- detachable. And how for. big is it? Is it like handheld or is it yeah? Like she a does, big harpoon. Yeah, it says on it dragon glass, but there was no dimensions. I didn't see any dimensions. Yeah. No, um, I didn't see any either. And so they they're kind of like connecting, and she shows him her her cat's paw dagger, and he's like, I always knew you were just a rich girl. Like, well, you don't know any other rich girls, yeah, so I don't know what I'm, you're talking about. I'm the only about. one you know. And uh, so naturally, it's cool that she showed him the Valyrian steel because he's a smith and he's got to appreciate that. But also showing him the Valyrian steel, I think, may trigger to him like, oh, maybe I can make some special steel with the dragon glass. Oh, and, maybe. You might you know, be onto something like, there. It may not be a coincidence that Valyrian steel is mentioned during the scene where we see the dragon glass being smelted. You know what I mean? So as she's walking away after handing him the diagram, she's like, I'm the only rich girl you know. And she kind of like turns and like <laughs> smiles a little bit and continues to walk out. I really like, I, I, I called this a long time ago. I think that we're going to see this. 
I did too in my wheel analogy. Yeah. And um that the Baratheon logo still appears on that wheel and I think Gendry is gonna have a role to play. Yep, definitely. And um we also get Ned in the crypts, which was a, l- a little bit reminiscent with Sam was talking to ne- uh John in the crypts because we have like this heavier All set right. guy and then Jon Snow who's was Ned Stark's son. <laughs> <laughs> but when they say, I have a son, you have a daughter, we'll join both of our houses. Reverse that. Get, or no, it's the same thing, son and it's daughter. It's the same thing. Um, and cue Baratheon music this episode, which we have not heard. In forever. It, since season one. Oh, so man. the fact that they're playing Baratheon music again over Jon Snow and Danny coming in, I thought maybe it's Gendry a little was bit foretelling. Too. Right, mm-hmm. so it he was, was coming uh, too. Yeah, it was another like Baratheon. John or yep. Danny could legitimize him, and he could be a Baratheon. It was like Baratheons arriving to Winterfell yep. again. Again, so damn, so cool. Yeah, and so um, then we cut over to Sansa's chambers. And oh, and she is fuming. Lord Glover fucks them again, and she's so pissed at John. Yeah. Um, John's mad. He's like, "Well, they said that they would, you know, stand behind House Stark." And Sansa like rolls her eyes. She's just like, "You're a fucking idiot." No, they said that they would stand behind Jon Snow, the king in the, the north. king in the north. And you're not the king in the north anymore. So they basically gave you the middle finger. And John's like, I'm done with this bullshit. I told you we needed allies. Like, why are you pissed? And she's like, well, you never said that you were going to abandon your crown. And and he goes, this this whole thing is a moot point. We need to, like, protect the north. This is what it's about. I don't fucking care about crown. We can deal with that (laughs) politics later. She's like, yeah, well, you brought home all these armies and stuff, but you also brought home a Targaryen queen. And he's like, do you think we can beat the army without her? Army of the Dead without her? She has fucking dragons. He's like, bitch, please. Wake up. This is necessary. Wake up. Like, I didn't have a choice. She's driving me crazy. Yeah. She's back to her, like, her old, like, little bitchy, petty self, and it's pissing me off because I liked Sansa in season seven. Yeah, but there is a moment here where she just kind of chills out, you know, and John tells her, you know, she's a good queen. She'll be good for all of us. She's not her father. And Sansa kind of smiles and says, no, you're right. And she is much prettier. prettier. And she's kind of smiling at that point, you know? Yeah, because she's tricking him because she wants to see his reaction to that. And she gets what she wants. She sees that he kind of like blushes a little bit and smiles a little bit. And then she kind of scoffs at him. She goes, did you bend the knee to save the North or because you love her? So she was making sure before she said that line that he does love her. Ooh, so man, Sansa I, is playing the game think, hard here. I don't think she's given him any slack in this yeah. scene at all. I think she's pissed as fuck. Yeah, I can see and, that now that you put it like that. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Yep. The only other one that we have is... Oh, we didn't really talk about the brief interaction between Sam and Bran when he comes down the stairs yeah, after finding out yeah. the truth. And Bran is waiting for an work? old friend. And I was, I was totally lost on me that. Too. He's like sitting out in there in the dark and Dave turns to me. He goes, he's waiting for Jamie. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's so and obvious then, like, in retrospect. And then like this hooded figure. And I'm like, I wonder who that is. And Dave goes, it's Jamie. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> Good job, Dave. You're the man on point. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so we, it's time to tell John the truth. And Sam kind of, Sam says to Bran, like, well, you're his brother. And he goes, well, I'm not his brother. Right. I'm his cousin. Yeah. And he trusts oh. you more than anyone. You are his brother, essentially, because you guys took a vow together. Right. You took an Now's oath the together time. the Night's Watch. And Bran must have, like, seen, had visions of something that lets him know, like, now's the time. It's got to be you. It's got to be have now. To tell. You have to it's tell gonna, him. Right. It's going to be important, you know? That was pretty cool. Okay. I think the last one we have is... Tormund. Um, 
last hearth. The last hearth, and we get Tormund and crew creeping through. We we see Barrick and Tormund, and they're at the last hearth, and this made me so sad um, because they sent little Ned home, and we're, we're getting this aerial shot of blood stains with missing bodies, and so it's like you know that the Night King has already yeah. been there, the army's been there. And first time seeing get, the last hearth too, which is cool. Yeah, you had said yeah. last season, "Oh, I hope we get to see last hearth. That would be cool." Yes, yes. I also wanted to see White Harbor. Right, I right, right. Did not see White Harbor, but we Unfortunately. did see. Not yet. I mean, maybe we will. I, I knew we would see. have to see at least a little bit of the aftermath of the White Walk, Whites and the White Walkers heading south. Right. We had to see yes. something relating to that this episode. And boy, did we ever. <laughs> we get such a great comedic line here too. So the night's watch and the wildlings kind of like run into each other and um, Ed goes, stay back. He's got blue eyes. I've, <laughs> and always, had I've eyes. always had blue eyes. Classic moment. <laughs> Love that too. And, uh, you know, Tormund asks, like, is, are there any survivors? And, Ed kind of shakes his head, no, did you find anybody? Well, the Umber boy, and they go into this room and there is Ned Umber stabbed to a wall with circular body parts around it. And I looked at Dave and I was like, these symbols, we have to start understanding what the meaning are here because um, Beric Dondarrion says, it's a message from the Night King. So we know that maybe it's a form of communication. Dave thought maybe it was a way of like opening portals or cause like spirals in our world, it's like you can teleport through them. They're, it's so hard to like, there's so many like symbolic reasons to bring in spirals to this world. But we know that they mean something. We know that they're a form of like communication or, you know, like writing or scribing. So what it means, I was really trying to figure it out. There are eight arms to that spiral. Ooh, interesting. It, it, it was very remindful to me of the Targaryen sigil as well with like the sort of spiral Ooh, shaped of the dragons. Is, oh my God, that's crazy. And that to me was like, I was like, oh shit, is that foreshadowing some type of connection between Danny and the Night King? And then I was like, oh man, maybe Danny gets turned into the night queen what if the night king like like if they're having a dragon battle or something and danny gets knocked off her dragon and the night king like approaches her and just touches her on the forehead and she God turns into a fucking white walker how crazy that would be big surprise right yeah huge so i'm really gonna start like looking i was thinking i might do a little research on what sim what symbology surrounds a spiral just to see if we can come up with any theories. I didn't have time to do it today because we're getting ready to take off on an airplane tonight, but yeah, it's all I good. will take some time to look at theories surrounding spirals. So they've discovered now that the army is between them and Winterfell and they're on foot. So we need to double up on the horses and if the horses last, we'll get there before the dead but we just have to hope that the Night King doesn't come first. And I was like, oh my God, it's so fucking crazy. It's so fucking crazy. Uh, I, I don't know if they're gonna make it on time. I think the Night King's gonna arrive before they do. Ugh. We'll see. We'll the, see. The suspense is killing me. It truly is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the notes that I have. Do you have anything else? Mm, not really just it was cool how when they're like first come like hear the footsteps in in the hallway and they kind of like whoom, spread apart and take cover on the sides of the of the walls i thought that was kind of cool and then as the footsteps are approaching um it sort of it made me think of that time when bran was in the night fort when they were heading north and they hear sam like boom Boom, stepping up the well, mm -hmm. you know, right before yes. Sam helps them through the wall is the same kind totally. of thing where like, you're like hiding in an area and you're hearing footsteps approaching louder and louder. And when they finally get to you, it's one of your friends. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. <laughs> oh, Love that. So good. All right. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for notes. Nice. All right. Stick with us guys. We'll be right back after a short break. 
Check out this next level Game of Thrones rap by Purpose from the hip-hop group Tragic Allies. This is from his new album, The Iron Throne of Microphones. I'm one of my rough Lord Stark. You should have taken the realm for yourself. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. War the five kings home, making claims of their own. Thousand blades of Aegon's enemies making a throne. Fight for the seven kingdoms, fortune favors the bold. Bravest of souls, battling to gain the control. Baratheon brothers are at each other's throat for the merit. King Joffrey thinking hellish, hoping both of them perish. The young wolf marches on the south, fighting with hatred. What great joy sailing north, which is right for the taking. And now that King Robert's dead, the truth spreading rapidly. Joffrey born of incest and infested travesty. Stannis bearing arms. Now his claim is his majesty Naturally, anyone opposing is a casualty Including his own brother whose fallacy is blasphemy Vanity cannot replace valiancy as tragedy Tactfully or readily casually prepare for battle The red priest's plans quickly started to unravel Smuggled on a boat, that's where rivals had to paddle To a cove near Renly's camp where both of them would travel Melisandre undressed and sat up on a gravel Where she gave birth into a shadow raid in front of Davos The creature's appearance very similar to Stannis Crawled out her womb and presumed to just vanish and vanish to the source for its enforcement of a death. The night is dark. Let us not forget the shadow was moving calmer. The breeze from out the harbor headed right into the tent where Renly's taking off his armor. While looking in the mirror, he was taken by surprise. The shadow of his brother came to hasten his demise. Ravens fly, word spreads to every castle. Meanwhile, Rob Stark is winning every battle. The young wolf triumphant in the Westerlands and Riverlands. Independence from the south has always been the bigger plan, but ignorance was overdosed with a broken oath for a daughter whom now all the fred hoped elope in an omen spoke by lord rickard carstock the curse of a kinslayer did play a large part to lost bannermen and lost allegiances getting even is fulfillment for some grievances with rob's army weakening and marching back to river run searching for some answers but the answer is there isn't one and so he's forced to make a choice by begging for forgiveness confront the phrase admit his fault in front of all the witness but water phrase ambitious and vicious with his moves his allegiance ain't consistent because it switches with his mood unfortunate but true the consequence was sad and deadly for the young wolf whose confidence was cracked lured into a trap without detecting the deception welcomed by the phrase and even offered full protection a wedding and reception extended all the guests rights so no one would expect it and accept it as a blessed night the wine will flow red the music playing loud without a shroud the killers blending in within the crowd waiting on a signal when to act upon her scheme water makes a scene and offers gifts to the queen a knife to her belly where the baby is the passenger and King Rob slain at the Red Wedding Massacre. Rosalind caught to find that trout. Her brothers gave her a pair of wolf pelts for her wedding. Signed, Walder Frey. Is that bad poetry? is dead <laughs> and his bitch mother oh i know walder frey gets all the credit all the blame i suppose depending on your allegiance never would have risked such an action if he didn't have certain assurances what you got from me do you disapprove i'm off for cheating this is war to slaughter them at a wedding explain to me why it is more noble doesn't the dinner. And we're back. Skipping news about Game of Thrones this week because we already have such a long, fun episode. So we'll go right into feedback. We got a lot of feedback this week. A lot of people excited about the new episode. Finally, right? So good. Yes. Yes. Take, take it away. You guys for... Okay. We have Lord Ty of House Gorman. Sir Duncan, thank you and your co-host for this podcast. I started my rewatch later than I should have. I finished rewatching last weekend and here 
We are on the day of the season eight premiere and I'm finishing the rewatch podcast. Between starting late and the length of the episode, it took me some major binging to catch up, but the content is just so damn good that I don't care. IDC. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Your Game of Thrones knowledge and general unrelated knowledge and fun facts. Think O-Parts, Allegory of the Cave, Icelandic Ponies, etc. Wow, what an episode. I love it, and I hate it at the same time. What the, I love... Uh, just so you know, when he said O-Parts, he's referring to out-of-place artifacts. Like oh, got an it. anomalous okay. archaeological artifacts that I've brought up, things like that, which is pretty cool. Nice, okay. Wow, what an episode. I love it and hate it at the same time. What I love, number one, the potential. They wasted no time hitting major narrative points. Definitely. Will John ride a dragon? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How will the dragon queen be received in Winterfell? Meh. Stark reunions, etc. Bran at one point even says they don't have time to waste. Oh yeah, more meta commentary. We've got six episodes, sure. we got to make it happen. <laughs> we got to go, we got to run. Classic. <laughs> Then they brought a ton of conflict into the forefront. John and Daenerys, Sam and Daenerys, Sansa and Daenerys. Okay, pretty much everyone in Daenerys. <laughs> Bran and Jamie, even a bit of John and Arya. They set the stage by answering a lot of our what ifs and the reminder of the and the remainder of the season can be the fallout to all of those things. Oh, and there's a zombie army showing up soon. Yeah, yeah. Two, CGI, John flying had me feeling like I was riding a roller coaster also. <laughs> dragon close-ups are epic. I'm dying to know why the dragons are getting testy with John when he kissed Daenerys. I think because it's their mom. <laughs> uh, I didn't even necessarily see them as being testy, but just kind of being interested. Like, huh, this is interesting. They're They're... Oh, I'm not, I won't say too much, but they've seen her have sex before, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, could it be just because it's their mom? Could be more, but what a shot of Drogon. Hate, number one. Oh, Letting yeah, it's, uh, there's the scene with the, the, the lesbian scene that we talked about in the books. Oh, yeah. Um, where Daenerys and one of her handmaidens on the ship when they're heading to Marine, it culminates as she's oh. about to, as she climaxes, Drogon like argh, like lets out a screech from across the room and like wakes oh, up. Oh, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, um, let's see. Number one, budding romance. John and Daenerys are so damn cute. I can't get enough, and I hate that because G R R M and G O T is known to shatter hearts once you get excited about a good thing. Arya and Gendry think each other look good. <laughs> now one of them is dead. It's just the GRRM way. Yeah. Cersei gives into Euron. Gross. Oh. <laughs> Shows us she's not really pregnant, though. Well, she could be still. Yeah, it's, <laughs> up for, it's, 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 it's a toss up. I could see where, where he's coming from, though. Like this yeah. does. It, it could be interpreted that way. It's definitely a hint for sure that maybe she's not. Mm hmm. He grabs her belly to length. Give me two hours, damn it. Dude, I know. I'm totally with you on that. Right? <laughs> the stage is set for an epic season. Let's go. Yeah. Yes. Sir Jeremiah, great job getting us through the rewatch and ready for season eight. Epic season seven finale. So many emotions. Thank you, Sir Jeremiah. Good to hear from you. Lady Victoria of House Meyer. John plus dragon equals no words to describe with a little heart emoji. Yep. Still hope that nothing comes between John and Danny's love story, but we're in Game of Thrones. Sad face. <laughs> Bran creeps me out. Yeah, he's definitely the creeper. Yeah, for sure. the laughing face at the end there, too. <laughs> yeah. Lady Laura Lee of House Stapleton. Such a great podcast. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Is that your mom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love thanks, it. Mom. <laughs> Jo Lord Johnny of House Store. Great freaking job. Super pumped for our community. Oh, thanks, man. Yes, Glad you're enjoying the podcast. Community. Totally. Sir Patrick of Hindsight. I just rewatched the first episode of season one. I'm anticipating some major parallels. Everyone's arriving at Winterfell. Well, you guessed right, Sir Patrick. Nailed it. Noticed Arya's first line is, where's the imp? Hashtag Tyria. <laughs> oh, and then... then John's one of his first line is where's Arya? Yep. So yep. that's like sort of mirroring that. That's great. 
Benjamin's first line is he dead or not? He says it to John, to John so double meta. <sighs> Prediction for season eight, episode one, Bran sees John and Danny in a compromising situation. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't quite happen, but it was close. It was close. <laughs> Drogon and Danny are both looking more like the weirwood trees in this season. Ooh. Dothraki mate with each other in the open with no shame or need for privacy. Drogon is named after Drogon, and he likes to watch. After Drogo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Drogo, yeah. Classic. Arya's look when John fails to notice her. Alas, a girl is truly no one. <laughs> and he's got a picture <laughs> of her. She's like... <laughs> she's like... <laughs> <laughs> This episode parallels the very first Game of Thrones episode in so many ways. It even ends with Bran looking at Jamie. Oh wow. my god, that's true. I didn't notice that. Like the first episode ends with Bran, with Bran and Jamie. That's nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. Drogon is the one innocently peeping at the incest this time. <laughs> Does that foreshadow that Bran wargs Drogon? <laughs> Love it. Alistair Thorne, Carl Fucking Tanner. And the Magnar of Fen, Ramsay Bolton, two White Walkers. Sam the Slayer has accomplished what none of them could. He has permanently killed Jon Snow. <laughs> I'm declaring Jon Snow as the first casualty of the season. Euron's red shirt crewmen don't count. Nice. Good, good call. I like that. The death that. of Jon Snow and the birth of Aegon Targaryen, the sixth of his name. Yes. Lady Lucy of House Jane. The opening title scene was so awesome. Yes, it so was. Right? How cool is that? Lord Christopher of House Cavero. So much to talk about already. Can't wait. Yes. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be streaming live after all the show is working after this one. So tune in for yes. that and we can get your comments on the air live. Lady Carlin of House Werderman. Hi, Duncan and Rachel. I know that Game of Thrones has known to be gruesome at times, but there have been a few times in the show where the violence has made me feel uncomfortable. Tonight's scene where with Ned Umber being impaled, surrounded by a spiral of severed limbs, was one of those moments where I felt uncomfortable. I actually had a shiver go down my spine, and then it intensified when the undead Ned started screaming as soon as Tormund started talking about killing the Night King. Oh, my shit. As much as I don't enjoy feeling this way, I hope that the remainder of this season will be filled with these bone-chilling moments. <laughs> I hope we figure out what that spiral means soon. Yeah, I think they will be too. On a happier note, I was all about Arya, that Arya and Gendry reunion. Here's to the final season. Only five more episodes to go. Oh, man. Good to hear from so you. Crazy. Thank you. Lord Joao Roca Spark. Hashtag winter is here. Yes, Indeed. it is. Okay, so we have my friend, Sir Alex of House Warrington. What up, Alex? The scene where Danny and John fly to the cave is reminiscent of when Egret is asking John to forget about his task, stay in the caves, and live a happy life together. John declines because he has to do what he has to do. Then leaving the caves leads to Egret's dying later down the line. This could be purpose of, could be a purposeful scene in foreshadowing one of the two of them dying later in the season. Rachel reminded me that Masande translated the Valyrian quote about Azor High and it not being gender pa gender specific, <laughs> gender specific. <laughs> There's a post on the Game of Microphones page about forging the forging of Lightbringer, and he posted it here. It's it's basically the quote of the story of um, Nightbringer or Lightbringer being forged, right? Is that what um, yes. with the picture yes. of John and Danny, where John is stabbing Danny with Longclaw? To yeah, forge. it's the description yeah. of how it of how it happened. Alex continues. I have a feeling that this could be the ultimate gender bend. I'm thinking that Danny is the princess that was promised, and John will sacrifice himself so that she can sit on the Iron Throne. Throughout the series, they've made it known that the Starks are blindly loyal, even to a fault. They function strongly on the beliefs of honor and the promises they make. If the post above is a rough outline of Masande telling John that he plays a role in all of this, could very well be him sacrificing himself and the crown for Danny so that she can relight the red sword of heroes. Damn. Two other notes, Bran knowing everything but waiting anyways. Maybe Bran is plotting something. Hmm. 
Last note, Ned telling John that he'd tell him about his mother the next time he saw him. That was the last time they saw each other, so before Ned died. So John being at Ned's crypt when Sam told him about his birth parents Perfect. was poetic. Yes. Yes, thank you for writing, Sir Alex. We love you. Yeah, great to hear from you. Thanks for writing in. Okay. Lady Marta of House Elizabeth. So since I love the shows where they lay the groundwork, my heart was so happy with this episode. I don't know why Sam is upset by his asshole father being killed. The man sent him to the wall, called him fat, and threatened to kill him. When Sam told John he was the one true king, eep! John doesn't want to be king. Now what? And Bran has said over and over he isn't Bran, so I'm pretty sure he won't care much about Jamie And Sansa. Oh, how I love her badassery. The Hound and Arya, my favorite duo ever. And Gendry and Arya are going to yes. do it. Woo. Oh, my god! Spicy with three heart emojis. Three of them. Dragons. <laughs> Man, how I love those dragons, especially when Drogon is jealous of Jon making out with his mom. <laughs> Laughing emoji. <laughs> what? What's up with the crazy symbols the White Walkers are using? Remember season one, episode one? We do remember. We do. How are they going to feed all those soldiers and dragons? Not much gardening in Winterfell. And Cersei is going to pass off that baby as Euron's. Ew. I was hoping the mountain was going to take him out. No elephants? What? What? No budget left for elephants? <laughs> that would be Seriously. too much trouble with time and management, Look at I suppose, how much dragon time we got, though, this oh, episode. Yeah. Got yeah. so much dragon. We're gonna, they're going to make up for it with more dragons and stuff like that, for I sure. So. <laughs> anyway, so much more to discuss, but I'm off to listen to all the first watch podcasts. Nice. Good plan. Nice. Yeah, hope awesome. you hope they're good. Hope you've been enjoying them. That's what I would be doing if I wasn't hosting one. <laughs> Lord Sean of House Porter, how can anyone be let down by this episode? It amazes me. It's a good one. Yeah. It is. Even though there's not a lot of action, it's got a lot just, of good moments. I think I felt melancholy because I was not ex- like knowing what to expect. And I think I would have felt that way with anything that panned out. You know what Probably, I mean? Like, yeah. it, like, it, it no just, matter what, we have to wait, it, wait another week. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Lady Amanda of House LeClaire. Was that really an hour? I need more. The season is not long enough. Oh. LOL. So many emotions. After the dragon ride, I couldn't help but laugh. Is John really taking her to another cave? <laughs> <laughs> then the way Drogon was making awkward eye contact. Nephew, daddy. <laughs> oh. Oh. I love that little smile Arya had when the little boy, Umber. Yes, it was John Umber. Ned Umber. Or Ned Umber ran past her during John's arrival, mirroring the first episode ever. Then we see him die in such a horrible way. That screech was terrible. I hope that's not a foreshadow for Arya. Oh, also, Cersei was drinking. Was her pregnancy a lie? Doesn't matter. Tyrion fell for it anyways. Kind of agreeing with Sansa right now, and I don't like it. Oh, LOL. Oh, man. I feel so uneasy going into the next episode's but I cannot wait. Same here. Yeah. One, one tiny little point of correction here. From Drogon's perspective, John wouldn't be nephew daddy. He'd be cousin daddy. Oh. <laughs> From Danny's perspective, he would be nephew daddy. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> oh, that's great. Lord Chris of House Saywell. Two years of waiting. Opening line, balls joke. <laughs> <laughs> It is about cocks in the end. Yeah. Uh, and he goes on, resting brand face. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. I Sansa, like that. straight up biatch. Daenerys, a queen who has to say she's a queen, isn't a queen at all. Oh, oh shit. Didn't even catch that one, man. Uh, Arya, emotions ahoy, seeing her react to seeing everyone. Why would Arya not want to show John the Valyrian steel dagger she has? Flaw. I agree. Jamie, uh, Jamie realizing who was staring at him with resting brand face. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) Pox will have her by the ear. Uh, Which girl? Which girl? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> this episode sets the pace for sure. John already knows he's a dragon. He's already ridden a dragon. Two dragons, technically. <laughs> Almost everyone has met everyone again. So many reunions were extremely not what people wanted them to be. Oh, and the Umber Boy with a very sad face. Yeah. Yep. Lady Sarah of House Larkham, it was a good episode. Sansa saying to Tyrion that you have lost your cleverness and you have to start acting clever again because Cersei is on the throne and we need to defeat her. I thought that rescuing of Yara was a bit too easy. Mm. Cersei inviting Euron into her chambers was so creepy. They totally belong together. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, terrifying couple. I loved Arya defeat, defending Sansa to Jon. It was heartbreaking when Sam found out about his brother. I wanted to punch Daenerys. Oh, <laughs> I love the ending, Bran meeting the person who inadvertently created who Bran is today. Yeah, good point. Really cool there. Lord William of House Steiner, hashtag make Tyrion smart again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The, the acronym isn't quite as catchy for that, though. Mtska, Mtsa, is it? <laughs> Princess Sarah of House Von Daltren says, First thing I noticed was no cold open. Usually the cold opens give us, give us some important information, so I wonder what it will be this season, if there even will be one. I was really glad they addressed all the things that the fans had talked about over the break right off the bat, i.e. John on a dragon, John finding out about his father, all the reunions, etc. I'm seriously worried for Bronn at this point and really want to know what's going through Cersei's mind and what she is plotting. She is giving off some spooky signals. Agreed. I felt like I wanted more for the reunion between Arya and the Hound, but the more I rewatch, the more I realize it's just how it should be. True to their characters. I agree. I thought it was really craftily uh, done there. Will the Northerners create a rift between Danny and John when they find out he's the true king? I'm afraid that if John doesn't want the title, it might be out of his hands if his family finds out the truth. Interesting. They could just make a, a claim to the throne on his behalf. Um, it, it has happened before in Targaryen history. Um, I think the oh, Dance wow. of the Dragons was started by um, the mother of, you know, the, the Aegon II the or somebody. Um, yeah, pretty interesting. I can't remember the details exactly. Oh, okay. and the new opening credits are so badass. The inclusion, inclusion of new events is, is, is so fitting. Definitely. Really cool. The wall falling and everything. Love it. Princess Sarah continues, basically the tension level is at an 11 and I'm loving it. I know it's going to be so fast, fast paced from here on out and I'm ready. Overall, great episode that gave me the feels I hoped for. Good. Nice. Glad you enjoyed it, Princess Sarah. Lord Jamo of House Maxwell. And if I pronounced your name wrong, please let me know. Yeah, let us know. Love that John and Arya didn't have some overly sentimental reunion indeed what actually occurred felt really suited to the characters they now are brilliant twists with bronze now cersei's hitman and tasked with killing her brothers damn i know crazy i didn't really see that one coming yeah neither did i amazing sam's reaction to the death of his brother and his subsequent asking of john if he felt daenerys would give up her crown to save her people has totally changed my outlook and hopes for this season, a fabulous opening episode. Awesome. Yes. Glad you enjoyed nice. it so much. Yeah, that's great. It was, it was a good episode. Lots of great stuff happened in this episode. Lady Lori of House Perkins. A bit let down, if I'm honest. Maybe I hyped myself up too much, but I was mostly disappointed with the Arya and Jon reunion. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Where was the heart-tugging music? Sansa and Tyrion just... Eh. <laughs> I expected more, I guess. I wanted more from Arya and the Hound, but I did love her conversation with Gendry. Yeah. There's some yeah, spark sure. there, and I like it. <laughs> the dragon flying fell flat to me. It was borderline cheesy at points. I could see that. Some of the CG wasn't yeah. necessarily the best in that po at that sequence, but, you know, it, I'm not, not too much to criticize. Um I was so looking forward to it, and it just felt goofy. Drogon looked beautiful, and I just didn't connect with the scene. The highlights were many. The opening sequence was fantastic and full of spoilers slash hints. I can't wait to watch it again. The best acted scenes were with Samwell Tarly. 
Agreed. That that reaction totally. when learning about Dickon's death is heart wrenching. Hands down, just fantastic acting here. I actually love that he told John the truth. That he told John the truth. Brilliant. Emo mm-hmm. super creepy Bran with the Friar Tuck haircut. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> but I did love how he was waiting for Jamie, an old friend, quote unquote. Ooh, I did love the Umber Boy white part. That was brilliant, too. Very creepy. The Night King is on his way. Yes, he is. Overall, I'd give it a six. First episodes aren't usually great, so I guess I can overlook a lot of the pacing issues in areas where things just fell flat. On to the next. I hope you I enjoy the next one. I think it's just a platform. More. Yeah, I think it was just a platform episode. I really think mm. this whole season's going to be really wonderful. Yeah, from here on out, I think it's just going to be madness. Sir Keith of House Hickman. The episode credits were awesome. Mm-hmm. I love seeing the interactions of people who haven't seen each other in a lit- in literal years. I only watched it once, but I loved every second. Going to watch it again tonight. Thanks, yeah. dude. Enjoy. Hell yeah. Lady Brenda of House Tackett. Lady Brenda of House Tackett. Poor Sam. Also, how is John going to act around Daenerys now that he knows he's related and that she had Sam's father and her brother killed? Yeah. We shall see. Definitely a wrench in the, in the gears. Also, what was she drinking? Water or wine? Uh, probably wine. It's another little hint. She's not pregnant, probably. Lady Ashley of House Cotterill. And again, if I butcher your name, please let us know. Why don't we burn John just to check that he's a Targaryen? Oh, <laughs> like the Salem witch trials? If he's, if he's unburnt, then he's innocent. If he burns, he's... No, if he burns, he's innocent. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Next, we have a, <laughs> a picture from Lord Derek of House Bartlett, who I'm trying to get to join us for an episode this season good friend of mine and he has posted a gif of from the never ending story is that right <laughs> yes, somebody riding a, a beast <laughs> it's a hilarious dragon. yeah it's great <laughs> lady gabriella of house aromi i loved it but it was too short i yes, feel you definitely lord justin of house wayne you know that's your aunt right <laughs> <laughs> um this one just has a, a a gif i guess or uh, uh yeah meme of drogon replaced with dumbo flying around and yeah. and uh yeah. drake replaced with cersei <laughs> oh is that drake i okay. think so i don't know it's funny whatever it is lady denise of house fustin i liked the new opening yeah, yeah it was pretty too. cool lady amanda of house slightum i loved it as expected awesome sir dean of house dimichevsky it could be better, but I don't care. I enjoy it anyway. <laughs> That's the right attitude. Joao Roca Spark adds, the look on Jamie's face when he sees Bran, priceless. Agreed. Really, really yes, good acting really there. really great. Mm-hmm. Lord Joel of House Erickson loved it. Cersei slash Kyburn's proposal to Bran was the most intriguing part to me. So curious of what's going to come of that. Only complaint was how unclimactic John riding a dragon was. It just felt so relaxed. (laughs) I kind of have to agree. Except for that big dip where he went down. The big dip (laughs) was kind of cool. But yeah, I thought he would ride it into battle and not just like on a joyride. But you know what? We got John riding a dragon, so I'm cool (laughs) with it. (laughs) Lady Lynn of House Laver. I really disliked the way Sansa was treating Danny. The dragon ride was a bit, a little bit cheesy. However, it was cool to see John riding a dragon that's named after his father. Good point. Bran yes. said he was waiting for a quote, an old friend that was referring to Jamie. Totally. I love that little, little clue they gave us there. Lord Christian of House Dahl Pedersen. Great episode, but where was Brienne? Ah, good, um, good question. We saw her a few times. She's oh, kind did? of in the background. Yeah, she's sitting um, close to the table when they're addressing the northern men, and she's also standing in the courtyard when John arrives. She doesn't have any speaking parts, though. Gotcha, gotcha. Lady Cheryl of House Dickens Peterson says the reunions were a little underwhelming. Yeah, that's understandable. It's probably because they just had to fit so many into such a short mm-hmm. period of time that they didn't all get the depth that we would have all ideally wanted, you know? Yeah. 
Lord Axel of House Erickson, great episode. Fantastic to see Sam's reaction to the Mad Queen's burning of his family. Brutal. The dragon ride was cool. Why the heck did they send little Ned Umber back to his castle after they knew the wall had come down? So stupid. Yeah, big I've risk. I've always had blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Bran looks at Tyrion and Jamie eyes. were epic. He will forgive Jamie, I think, but Tyrion has turned on Danny, no doubt, after that Bran stare. Ooh. Mm, interesting. Bran knows something. Oh, man. That's interesting. Damn, Bran would know something. Oh, yeah. but at least at least they have Bran to out out something if Tyrion mm -hmm. did do something. Yep. Lady Thon Buono. Dang, it was good. I cried for Arya and John. Screamed for little Lord Lumber. Lord Umber mounted on the wall, felt bad, Sam telling John, and pumped my fist in the air for Bran, staring Jamie down. <laughs> I can't wait for next Sunday. You yeah, and me seriously. both. Next Sunday is going to be fucking wild. Lady Trogder of House Burninator. <laughs> it's an old uh, internet joke. Oh, God. Trogdor the Burninator. The, drog oh, the Trogdor God. comes in the night. I was going to say, that was an interesting name. Love it. Freaking loved it. Jamie's face right there at the end. The whole thing was a bit fast paced, but that's understandable. Little Lord Umber haunted my dreams. Yeah, he, that was rough. Definitely, definitely. Sir Matthew of House Rep. All in all, an, an enjoyable episode. It really felt like this season is setting up everything to come for the season by getting all of the reunions, rescues, and revelations out of the way right off the bat so we can focus on the wars on two fronts with the White Walkers and Cersei. I loved all the symmetry to the pilot episode and Robert's arrival to Winterfell with Danny's in this episode. Danny and John having a private moment in front of that waterfall where she mentions she could stay there a thousand years reminded me a lot of John's time with Ygritte, where they wished they, they never had to leave this cave. Theon's fast-paced rescue of Yara mirrors her attempt to rescue him from the kennels. Yeah, good point. Yeah. A, a little disappointed this wasn't given more screen time. Noticed Cersei is drinking again after her last after her time with Euron. Could this be a hint that she's no longer pregnant or never was to begin with? For the first time in the series, I find myself in agreement with Cersei Lannister. I really wanted those elephants. <laughs> yes. I think that was a little bit of meta commentary Definitely. from the uh, showrunners. Absolutely. I'm going to imagine the ginger soldier with his face half burnt off is, <laughs> is Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that oh, conversation between Sam, Jorah, and Danny was painful to, to listen watch. I'm sure she is having regrets. Excited to see where we go from here. Oh, also, LOL, that Drogon face. Every pet owner knows the feeling when you're trying to get things going with a partner and see that face staring at you. <laughs> Just not one the size of a 747 that could burn you to a crisp. Oh, love it. Great comment. Lady Angelica of House Garcia Decker. My only complaint, while it was cool to see, is the dragon riding. They know the urgency. They have days to prepare, and yet they have time for a whimsical dragon ride. <laughs> whimsical. And a one-way ticket to Bone Town. Uh. Come on, guys. LMAO. Also, where in the seven hells is Ghost? The oh, reunion ghost. I was waiting for. Yeah, yes. good point. Lord Ryan of House Cortez. Too freaking short for waiting over 500 days for 52 minutes. Yeah. I feel you, brother. I feel you. Lord Phil of House Balanzic. Too short. LOL. But I loved it overall. Lord Howard of House Bennett. Brilliant. Plenty of different thoughts. Sadness when Sam found out he, the way Daenerys killed his dad and bro, and when he told John who he was. Just love Arya, the cold little bitch. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lord Evan of House Brookman. I know they are up against the clock now. Please answer all the questions, but I wouldn't have minded easing the foot just slightly off the gas. <laughs> Certain portions with great characters seemed to rush to get their piece. Ha, Bronn didn't exactly get this. <laughs> Damn. It was amazing, though, and pretty fantastic that nearly all surviving have at least circled back to Winterfell. The only other complaint was that it didn't run for 10 hours, so we couldn't put this baby to bed and get started with the healing process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lady Cory Eugene of House Coon cried at 8.38 and 35 minute marks. Tears of joy and wonder. Ooh, I'm going to have to go back and look to see what's at those minute marks. 
Me too. Lord Bryson of House Wolf. Man, what a bing bang boom episode. <laughs> the opening reminded me so much of season one when the Lannisters came to Winterfell. Line of the episode, Bran, we don't have time for pleasantries. Yep. Setting the tone for the episode, no time for drama, winter is here. So many reunions, I was not expecting all the reunions in the first episode. Sansa, quit being a brat. Sometimes times are changing. You're on the right side, get over it. <laughs> what an awkward position Sam is in. I didn't expect him to get the news from Daenerys himself, herself. Your dad didn't want to join me, so I killed him. Well, that's not too bad. At least my brother will be cool. Nah, burned him too. Oh. <laughs> All the while, she's coming to praise him for saving Jorah. Ah, damn, what a tragedy. I think Sam Call is strong-minded enough and understands the situation well enough to stay the course and not be vengeful towards his new queen. Hope so. So, does Daenerys already know that Jon's rightful heir to the throne or something? Sure, seem... Like she was trying to kill him with that fancy dragon race. <laughs> I couldn't help but get Harry Potter vibes during the scene. That's funny. Nice. After Sam breaks the news to John in the tombs by Ned statue, I can't tell if he's more upset that he's supposed to be king or that he's banging his aunt. <laughs> and what an episode. What an epic scene to end on Bran waiting for an old friend who none other than Jamie Lannister. Damn. The episode was worth the wait. I am so excited we're rolling along again. It did feel weird seeing new unfamiliar Game of Thrones, though. After rewatching it four times while waiting, <laughs> I don't think Bronn will end up killing J Tyrion or Jaime. I do think Cersei just handed Bronn the cross bow that Jaime will kill her with. Ooh, I like that. Oh, Can't wait for next week. Damn. Nice. Thanks for commenting, Lord Bryson. Great feedback. Archmaester Stitches from the Luminescent Citadel on the Siren Isle says, I'm not his brother. I'm the Night King! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. Lady Stancha of House Hall, it was great. Set a great foundation for the remaining five. Yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. Lord Seth Alex of House Abraham, unfulfilled expectations, always hungry. Uh, yeah, I feel you, man. Always hungry. Lord H. Hasib of House Ahmed. Loved it. Me too, yes. brother. Great yes. to hear from you. Thanks for writing. Lady Mary of House D. Bold. Bran, Ice, Enemy, Danny, Fire, Aegon will have to kill them both and will marry Sansa to keep the Stark curls safe. John will marry Sansa? Oh, damn. <laughs> that's crazy. Ah, that I think funny. that's what she's saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lady Shermai of House Henderson loved it so much. I dreamed about it. Damn. That's awesome. I remember having dreams, uh, zombie dreams mm -hmm. after when Walking Dead first aired. Yeah. Lady Lucy of House Jane fucking loved it. From the opening credits to the final scene, it was amazing. Only messed up for me was the Arya Sandor reunion. Aw. Maybe you'll grow to appreciate it more. Possibly. L Lady Claire of House Johnson. I loved it. Good. Glad you liked it, Lady Claire. Lord Muhammad of House Haroon. Looking ahead for, for episode two, episode one was more likely a reunion for all characters. Indeed it was. Yes. And we have a, certainly have a spectacular season ahead of us to look forward to. I cannot wait. Yes. Thank you guys too. all so much for your feedback. It's always so much feedback great this hearing week. from you. Yeah. We love it. Yeah, Thank back you guys. in the main season, now we're getting lots of feedback. It's awesome. Yes, love it. And we're really, really looking forward to being able to share your feedback on the live shows coming up. That is going to be a lot of fun. So make sure That'll to stay really tuned cool. for that, guys. All right, that's our show, episode 110. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening, guys. We love you. Yeah, and a huge thank you to Lord Matt of House Christensen, Champion of Liberty, for joining us today. Yes, thank you, Lord Matt. We were so happy to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, definitely. And another huge thanks to John Bailey, the epic voice guy from the Emmy-nominated Honest Trailers for announcing our show. If you'd like to donate or subscribe to support us, you can go to paypal.me slash gompodcast or patreon.com slash gompodcast to donate an amount of your choosing. There are links to both at gameofmicrophones.com. Doing some online shopping? Go to gameofmicrophones.com and click on our link to Amazon. As an Amazon associate, we earn from qualifying purchases. 
Any contribution you make helps, and you can help secure the continued existence of GOM. We'd like to thank our patrons, Sir Matthew of House Rep, Lady Lucy of House Roberts, Lady Candace of House Twos, Lady Terry of House Theodore, Lord Jeff of House Allen, Sirenicide, Lord John of House Grills, Lord Jeremiah of House Carpenter, and Luke, Low Duke. We love you guys and appreciate your patronage. And we'd also like to send out an additional thanks to Lord Bryson of House Wolf and to Tarot Spirit. Thank you for your donations. Yes, thank you guys. We love you. And make sure to check out Sirenicide, the serialized horror drama podcast featuring me and Archmaster Stitches. Just go to sirenicide.com and download it wherever you get your podcasts. We also want to give a huge thank you to Lady Lisa of House Sky, Pie Romancer. She has been epic behind the scenes in getting our website Game of Microphones up and running. She's a next level artist, you guys. You have to check out her amazingly illustrated book, The People You May See. It's one of my son's favorite books. It's available now on Amazon.com and it's Prime eligible too. And I also have can... one of her pieces of artwork over here. Oh, yes. Her I'm so Drogon jealous. That she, uh, that she did. So badass. Thank you, Lady Lisa. You can check all of her work out at fineartsbylisa.com. She's also on Instagram and Facebook slash fineartsbylisa. You can hear Kristen, Jason, and other Podcastica hosts covering Game of Thrones Season 8 over at House Podcastica. They've released a new episode covering Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 1, Winterfell. You can find that at housepodcastica.com or by searching for House Podcastica on your favorite podcast platform. Next episode, we'll be covering Season 8, Episode 2, the name of which is still unknown. Give it a watch and send us your thoughts. We'd love to read them on the air. If you'd like to call, you can call us at 813-563-3739. That's 813-JOFFREY. If you would like to write in, you can email us at ravens at gameofmicrophones.com. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gompodcast. Game slap. Oh. You can also listen to Game of Microphones on YouTube, BitChute, and Steam It. Just search for Game of Microphones to find our channel. Likes, comments, and shares are greatly appreciated. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Gab, and Minds at GOM Podcast. And we're on Tumblr, too, at Game of Microphones. All right, that's our show. Thanks for listening. May I ask, how are we meant to feed the greatest army the world has ever seen? While I ensured our stores would last through the winter, I didn't account for Dothraki, Unsullied, and two full-grown dragons. What do dragons eat anyways? Whatever they want. What was this at the wall? What was this like thing of dismembered body parts and the <laughs> screaming oh, the kid? Like, that was yeah. that freaked me out when that thing started screaming and they lit it on fire. The opening scene with little Ned Umber. Oh, um, nice. Running through the forest. And I kind of dubbed it the flashback that's not a flashback. Right. It was so cool how they totally mirrored that pilot episode scene. They even have the Baratheon music playing. I know, I noticed that too. What the hell? I was like, what the hell? (laughs) Yeah. The graphics on the intro to me, I've never really looked that deep into the subtleties of them to try to interpret them. But for me, it's like, as long as that intro music doesn't change, I don't care. (laughs) Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as as that stays the same, because it hits just as good as Star Wars or anything else does. And it, as far as setting the stage for any show or movie experience... Game of Thrones is 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 up there. You wonder what it would be like if it had some lame, <laughs> crappy song, yeah. you know, or just like ruined the vibe. But uh, yeah, I actually just found online the other day, randomly browsing around, but I found a little music box, like little manufactured music boxes, and you crank it, and it's the Game of Thrones theme and little chimes. <laughs> I'm waiting for that to come in the mail. Oh, nice. Just because, you know, when the show's not on anymore. I'll totally. have that in the future as a mantelpiece <laughs> or something. I noticed that it's um, my alarm clock in the morning. Oh man, I might uh, have to do that. Um, Sansa needs to get that stick out of her ass. That's, mm. I mean, like 
I love Sansa. She's been growing on me as a character, but my God, this episode, I just kind of wanted to slap her and just be like, open up a little bit. It just Torin. Torin Stark. Yeah, he knelt to a Targaryen, to Aegon the Conqueror. So it's it's like a sort of history repeating itself. Finally, the Northern Kingdom gets its own autonomy and sovereignty. And then all of a sudden, this this foreign ruler comes in with dragons and is like, fuck all you guys, we're taking us back. You know? Like, so it makes sense for them to be real fucking mad. For Sansa, too, it'd be... As far as I recall, it, I don't remember her providing a better plan maybe i missed that that's kind of what's annoying is like i get where you're coming from but right you're right it's a bad plan what's your plan uh unless you have um even the part in this episode where she's kind of bitter like well i didn't plan to feed these armies and what do <laughs> dragons even eat like well a uh, good problem to have that you have dragons right. we'll figure out how to feed right. them well of all the things i love about the show it's like i mean nobody's safe in game of thrones so that's the best part the people you love might die the people but every death is is so emotionally involved because you have cases like joffrey where you've been waiting for it forever and it's the best it delivers you get to see his weird purple <laughs> yes. stupid face and then every other character that you love that you're so emotionally invested in you can't believe they kill off like ned stark for oh in the first God. season spoiler alert yeah I don't even know. Medieval. kings and queens and dragons and all that's never been my thing so i always thought like ah that's some that's some nerd crap but then um <laughs> same here man. some people tell me to get into it so i actually did not watch it until the end of season seven. Oh wow season it. seven yeah. damn and the the first episode of game of thrones is like such a punch in the face that it's like okay okay really because i had, had no spoilers i mean i knew there was like i knew that incest was a thing in the show and stuff but i i just i guess i just didn't expect such immediate exposure to such adult <laughs> themes let's put it that way hilarious <laughs> unbelievable for sure. and so i was like all right i mean okay i can get into this <laughs> when you binge it the way i did when you want to know the answer to what happens you have that immediate gratification yep. now oh my god no now i'm watching it in the same everybody who watches week by week it's like uh, you know i'm really thirsty i couldn't for sleep last night Welcome i watched it club. twice last night but you watched had, it through twice. I, I did. I, I watched it with my husband and he called out some things like he immediately called out who Bran was waiting for. Oh, nice. And I was like, oh, my God. That so was crazy. so cool. Yeah. I was like an old friend, huh? I wonder what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Should have known. It's so obvious. Yeah. My husband said, he goes, they need a little bit of happiness because I think there's going to be a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of main characters are going to get killed sure. off. So I Bring think we as an audience may look back on this episode as a fond, like, farewell to these yeah, characters. Yeah. yeah, but that that was also why that was cool. There's pretty much no Jamie Lannister until he shows up and just has this kind of eye glance back and forth with, with Bran Stark. Epic stare down too. Like, yeah. oh my, and the look Maybe on Jamie's like face. Waldo. Oh my God. Yeah. What? The performance so well. there. Wow. I yeah. was amazed at all the emotion that he was managing to capture with just that stare. And the moment where he like turns around and pulls his hood off, it sort of reminded me of the, the reveal of Luke Skywalker in Star Wars episode seven, uh. right at the end. <laughs> Huh. He, you know, he turns around with a hood and does the same thing. Maybe it was a slight homage to that. Hmm. That's one thing we like doing is pointing out homages to other other shows and movies uh, that is, we can find. Is that common in Game of Thrones? I guess I haven't noticed a ton of them. But I, as I said, I'm not the biggest movie buff to know what might be a nod and what wouldn't be. Yeah, the, there's been a bunch. Yeah, definitely. Like hmm. there was one where um, Stannis tells John. Um, no, John tells Stannis, I was told to keep your enemies close. And Stannis is like, uh, he's like, whoever said that didn't, you know, didn't have many enemies. <laughs> so that's like a, sure. a Godfather reference. Keep your friends close, your enemies closer, you know? Oh, I see. I see. I was listening to Game of Microphones because my son likes to listen to it, but he's two and a half and he's picking up on all the cuss words that we use. So oh, no. he's I had a to cunt, mommy. Like... <laughs> yeah. That guy's a cunt. And Nikolai Kosterwaldo just nailed it. I mean, absolutely nailed that performance. He's just kind of scanning Winterfell. It's been almost a decade, or, you know, I guess in our world, it's been almost a decade since he's been to Winterfell. But mm. he's kind of looking around and 
Smiling. You know, he was smiling, smiling when he looked around yeah. Winterfell. He's probably having, you know, memories, and then he scans over, and there's this creeper sitting in a wheelchair, like just, just still staring at him. <laughs> Bran was creeping a lot in this episode. So many, like <laughs> looking up at Tyrion too, and he was standing on the second story after talking with uh, with Sansa. Yes, yes. Bran is gr- he's a great creeper, dude. He, he's got I, creeping I down. Creep like Bran. <laughs> <laughs> Lurk like Arya, creep like Bran. Dude, I like it. That's great. So, what happens after the Battle of Winterfell? Does Winterfell fall and they're forced to retreat to King's Landing and that's what I happens next? I think they're going to be forced to retreat to the Iron Islands. Oh, the Iron Islands. Ooh, oh, how because, about the Eyrie? How about the Eyrie? Oh, that would make well, sense. Sansa has connections about there. The Eyrie oh, the dragons. The dragon. But the Iron Islands also. Yeah, but the army of the dead can't swim. Well, so that doesn't mean have... they can't walk on the ocean floor and all come walking out together. I think that that's oh like a red herring, you know, like oh, the, they specifically asked it. You know, you're almost like, can they swim? And John's like, no. <laughs> so they baited that's us. The they baited us into thinking islands are safe. But there's all the like those lines from the books. What is it? Patchface says something about dead things in the water and stuff oh, like that. So, oh my God, like that song. Yeah, yeah. The there's It's always summer and... under the sea. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my God. It's so like, it's entirely no, it's, possible. No yeah, it's entirely possible right. that we could have the fucking army of the dead come marching out of the water and just take everybody by surprise. I am... Uh, that would be such a mind fuck for me because I feel like I want there to be some safety. Like, <laughs> There's no safety. Okay. Uh. Oh my god, my dog just <laughs> scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Outtake. Of I have my window open. <laughs> I have my window open and it's shut my door. And oh, I'm home alone, man. so I totally freaked out. This is going to be fun doing video with the, the bloopers and outtakes and stuff. People will be able to see how they're like cut together and stuff. <laughs> oh, shit. So, and you know, Sansa being the lady of Winterfell now, she's like, she's lurking somewhere. Lurking. You know, like, who Love knows it. where Arya is? She's always lurking <laughs> and she is too. a lurker and a creeper and a, and a and a brooder or moper would be john right <laughs> yeah totally Bron being hired to kill jamie and Tyrion. <gasps> what the, what fuck? the fuck dude Bron, oh the my betrayer. God. yeah well yes. he hasn't done it yet I'm not sure yeah, i yeah. was just gonna say i'm jumping to conclusions but this may be the the seeds of his undoing though i didn't recognize the other two but i recognized her because she's in the orgy scene i may have been looking at other things besides their faces okay well (laughs) you can can look i'm not gonna look at that (laughs) that's weird (laughs) i was concerned because sam had just found out the truth about the toasted tarleys you know the toasted tarley truth and uh (laughs) It's just like, I think it's going to be a really tough pill to swallow for Danny. It's really tough for John, obviously, which we get in this scene, but I think she is not going to take it very well. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. And so, <laughs> fuck we, you, we, HBO. We, <laughs> mind blown. Oh. Um, little moments here and there. We'll like get Ned to Umber like... popping his head out. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. He's like, hmm? Yeah. Or the, <laughs> the uh, montage of guys getting crossbowed in the head when Theon attacks the boat. And the the uh, eunuch joke, which is oh, like what we start yeah. out the episode yeah, with. That's the first so line of the whole episode. Um, so Sam falls down the crypt steps. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that. That was so cool. <laughs> John's like loved that. What the fuck was that? And he hear, oh, 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 and he's like trying to get. Yeah, up we and... got lots of good Sam, like oh, and like oh my, and things like that. This episode, like when he almost gets hit by that that horse and carriage right after he finds out the toasted Tarly truth and is walking yeah. down the steps, he's like oh, and he like freaks out. Oh, so, um, something. Yeah, yeah. Massimo, Massima, something like that. Yeah, yeah. and she fucking. Khaleesi. Please. She had, yeah, she had Dario lop his head off in front of the crowd. And remember, they all re- reacted hiss, 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 hissing at her. Oh, that was creepy. 
he so I all heard I guess the guy realized the moment I could not have been a fault as a ball for your odd day shade yeah it was funny too right when he says your mother was Leona Stark John John kind of goes <laughs> as if like yeah right like like, like they hooked up, like Ned and Leona. Hooked up. <laughs> I didn't even think about it that way, but <laughs> just like, uh, like, oh, you guys are like conspiracy theorizing about, like, Ugh, like for some reason, alternate John origin theories. He's like, we know I'm a bastard. My dad's Ned. Like, why do you? What are you talking about? Right? <laughs> like, what would your reaction be to that? Like, I. He okay, stumbles so my, backwards. My parents aren't my parents. Okay, uh, whatever. But I, I'm not Jon Snow. I'm a totally. I'm Aegon Targaryen. Name, like I'm not even John Targaryen. Like, he literally I'm knows. Targaryen. And this is this is that moment where I talked <sighs> about where like there, we have the theme of Jon Snow knows nothing. And this is how we learn here how little he really knows. Like he literally knows nothing, even about himself. Nothing. You know, he doesn't even know his name. And this is uh, Jon Snow knows nothing. And plus the whole Jon Snow, John Doe type thing where mm-hmm. like you use John Doe to as a, as a placeholder for a name when you don't know the identity of a victim of a, of a crime, for instance. So it's yeah. perfect knowing nothing. And also the John Doe hint, like combining those two together, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just like it's just so funny seeing him learn the truth and realize how little he knows about everything. I'm just waiting for Cersei to die. That's <laughs> all I really want. In yeah. life. <laughs> so Matt mentioned earlier, like these big deaths that we wait seasons for and how like we get to finally the purple wedding and Joffrey gets killed and we're all like, yeah, yeah. like, ah. And uh, so are we going to get that moment for Cersei? Are we going to get that? Or is she going to live? You know what I mean? Like, are we going to get it? Uh, And I thought to myself, she's talking about executing people. And the next scene we get was Bronn. Don't do it, Cersei. Dude. You you can make eunuch jokes, but no one else can make dork jokes. <laughs> like, why is that? Because <laughs> I and still have my balls. I have balls. And you don't. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So, like, you, yeah. it, 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 basically, it's just saying, like, it sucks when somebody's making fun of you for something, but. Yeah, it's okay. Like, don't worry. They're not, we're not here to, like, roast you alive. We're just here to save your lives. So I think that also might be the reason why she smiles a little bit here. It's just nice, nice mug right. there. Dude, the others. <laughs> That's awesome. I would love to like cosplay Sansa, but I'm not sure I could do that resting bitch face like she does. <laughs> and uh, look at you. Yeah, you're a you're man. man. Almost. Almost. <laughs> I'm almost a man, but I am partly a three-eyed raven computer, you know. <laughs> Download data. Oh, my God. And she calls Lord Umber, who <laughs> pops his head out. Another little Me? comedic moment <laughs> the, the, in this episode. <laughs> and they all kind of, like, nod, like, it's okay. You know, you, you can have as many wagons and stuff as we can spare. Just hurry back to the last hearth so you can get murdered. Yeah, fuck. I try... So the first time I watch it through, I just watch it with my natural, like where my eye goes. And then wherever my eye doesn't go, the second time I watch it is where I try to force my eye to go the other places nice. that I'm not paying attention to the first watch. So the Good second plan. time I watched it, I I look in the background, like who's in this, who's behind the scenes, um, who's behind, who are we seeing, like what's kind of happening what's going on around what the camera is focusing on Mm -hmm. because like that's where like last episode I talked about Varys being like a comedic factor in the the big meeting he's really not an upfront person and if you're just watching the people that are in focus on the camera you would miss his reactions so I do like trying to pay attention to the, the what's going on behind the main character yeah that's awesome that's really cool. We have the biggest, most powerful army the world has ever seen showing up to have your backs, guys. Like, be cool with that because it's super cool of us to do. Don't forget that you're in the family, too. That was the most shocking moment for me. This was the most badass moment for me. You yeah. know, yeah. where Danny is just it. like, 
dragons eat whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. You should know that. Like, you know, what did you didn't get the memo? Stop being a little bitch. Yeah, like, like we'll devour you if we want to. I, you know what? If you don't want our help, I'll just take them all home. And you. Gendry's a smith. He's now forging dragon glass. I was thinking maybe he's going to do some experimenting and try mixing steel and dragon glass together mm -hmm. to forge dragon steel, maybe like a modern okay. iteration of dragon steel. Um, so in, instead of like outright apologizing, she kind of apologizes by saying like, we both survived though, you know, like, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, Let uh, bygones be bygones. Oh, I, I thought it was interesting too, that the fact that she thought that he was the most clever man alive was interesting to me. Like that means that yeah. she considered him in high regard you know that's what that says to me so that mm -hmm. that says to me that that means that he could prove that he is you know one of the most clever men alive by redeeming himself and doing something awesome and Good. that makes me think that they these two have the potential of actually getting together for real at some point oh shit you well because danny's danny's off the radar now because she's with john mm -hmm. and Tyrion saw that happen i mean he was in the boat with her and watched john go in so maybe he's turning his sights to back to sansa maybe like the somehow. two the two leaders would be together then the two two of like the closest mm -hmm. advisors would be together yeah um, be quite a little powerhouse. It would certainly be a way to help unite the North. I mean, the Northern Lords have tr become, come to trust Sansa um, mm -hmm. after everything that's happened and how she stuck, stood up for them and been there and helped get Winterfell back and everything. So maybe, totally. maybe her being like, listen, you know, I trust Tyrion. That could do go a long way or with I'm the Northern marry Lords. Him again. Yeah, 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 that could go a long way with the Northern Lords to uh, bring the North and the South together to unite them. Mm -hmm. And we see yeah. just we see like the uh, the wheel in the view, and then looking right mm -hmm. past the wheel to Jamie, and we see him like react and see Bran sitting yeah. there. I thought it was just a really great it's shot. Like a double take. He's like, yeah. What? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what? I have terrible news. Terrible news. The dead have broken through the wall. And Cersei's, and Cersei's like, like good. good. Yeah, what and the fuck is wrong with you? And even Kyburn seemed shocked by this reaction from Cersei because yeah. even he had said it was terrible news. So yeah. if Kyburn even is like, whoa, you know, it's got to be something fucked up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just get it over with and and, and kill me? He's yeah. Like, no, we're family. We're the last Greyjoys without any ball or with with balls. Plus, who would I have to talk to? And she's like, "You're an idiot, man. You picked the fucking losing side with that well, dumbass queen." Then I'll bail and sail the Iron Fleet somewhere else. Yeah. But first, I'm gonna fuck the queen. And I thought that was kind of maybe reading between the lines. Like, well, I'm gonna sail to the iron, like the Iron Fleet somewhere else after I fuck, like fuck her over. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck like, her, and then I'm gonna fuck her gonna over. He's gonna fuck her, and then he's gonna <laughs> fuck her over and leave. Love it. That's so awesome. That's what I kind of like took it as. Did you see uh, Captain Strickland's face? He just like shakes his head. Just, <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. Love it. Really wanted those elephants. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Because we were like, we want the dragons, we want the elephants, we want the mm -hmm. pack of wolves and the dire wolves, and we want like all this cool stuff. We just give it to us all. Krakens, you know, unleash the hounds, everything. Totally. Ice spiders, whatever. undead mammoths, giants. Like we want everything. That's disappointing. Yeah. So next, uh, it's after they just had sex, Euron and Cersei. We see the I deed is done. Those elephants. Yeah, and then he started. He's insulting Robert. You know that. Hey, like, how did I compare to that fat what a king? Freak. Like, yeah. who cares how you compare? He's just like, like being wild, and then he's like asking about like how did I compare to Jamie? Yeah, I know you guys have been doing it. I think that's it. really what he wants to know. Yeah, he's just leading into it. <laughs> so we cut over to. The bow and arrow. That's right. I was going to say. Theon has his bow again. He, like you said last episode. Oh my episode, God, that's a big symbol. Theon with a yeah, bow. Yeah, he was an expert oh, he was a hot marksman. Shot. He was a hot shot so with a bow. He's getting kind of back into his role of Theon Greyjoy. Remember, and... remember when he saved Bran? Yeah. And Rob was like, 
Yeah, he shot you that guy like my brother. Yeah, but <laughs> but Theon's an expert and he knew it, you know. So yeah. the fact that Theon is holding Trusted a it. bow again, that symbolizes that Theon Greyjoy is back. That not it's not somebody else. This is Theon. And he yeah. like that door kicks open and the guy falls in and Yara looks up in astonishment. Last thing on earth she would ever imagine and is she's kind of pissed obviously because she had yeah. him in the face <laughs> yeah. once he sets her free <laughs> loved it and but then immediately like it's like stannis you know cut your knuckles off for your smuggling but, you. but he'll but he'll raise you to be a lord for like, for helping God him out damn it you fucked me over but i still love you <laughs> but you're now you're making up for it and danny hops on and she's like come on Go Come on, on, let's go. And he's like, I don't know how to ride a dragon. He's, she's like, dude, Nobody you were does. just riding me last night. So I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> oh. Oh. <Hey> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. This is cool. Oh, it, it was funny that it took off so quick because it reminded me of this time where I was sitting on a motorcycle on like a little motorized scooter, ring, 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 revving it up, and my friend's dad flicked it into gear and it like Shit, <laughs> launched. It, yeah, launched out from under me. <laughs> I had to bail off it. That was pretty funny. You've completely ruined horses for me. And <laughs> yeah. it made me think, ooh, dragons are the bacon of rideable animals. <laughs> There's some commercial that's like, never add bacon to food. It will just ruin all food. It that's, ruins all yeah, food. That, that doesn't have forward. bacon forever. And then it, they say like Hulu is the bacon of TV or something like that. I don't know. So, oh, so dragons are like the bacon of rideable animals, basically. And uh, so naturally, it's cool that she showed him the Valyrian steel because he's a smith and he's got to appreciate that. But also showing him the Valyrian steel, I think, may trigger him to him like, oh, maybe I can make some special steel with the dragon glass. Oh, and, maybe. He might you know, be onto something like, there. It may not be a coincidence that Valyrian steel is mentioned during the scene where we see the dragon glass being smelted. You know what I mean? spirals in our world it's like you can teleport through them they're it's so hard to like there's so many like symbolic reasons to bring in spirals to this world but we know that they mean something we know that they're a form of like communication or you know like writing or scribing so what it means i was really trying to figure it out there are eight arms to that spiral. Ooh, interesting. I, it, it, it was very remindful to me of the Targaryen sigil as well with like the sort of spiral Ooh, shaped of the dragons. Is, oh my God, that's crazy. And that to me was like, I was like, oh shit, is that foreshadowing some type of connection between Danny and the Night King? And then I was like, oh man, maybe Danny gets turned into the Night Queen. What if the Night King like like if they're having a dragon battle or something and Danny gets knocked off her dragon and the Night King like approaches her and just touches her on the forehead and she oh, turns terror. into a fucking White Walker. How crazy that would be. Big surprise, right? Yeah, huge. Gender specific. <laughs> Gender specific. Classic. Pox will have her by the ear. Uh, which, <laughs> which girl? Which girl? That? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch it again. Best acted scenes, oh, hands down, just being, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to imagine the ginger soldier with his face half burnt off is, <laughs> is Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've traveled to a bunch of random places and random countries, but as a Midwestern guy, I recently have been falling in love with what the more rugged parts of America have to offer to all of us before they're gone. Team Age Productions and Powers Media House presents Beautiful America, a musical documentary series with all original content. Explore the southwest of America and indulge in some places you've heard of and plenty more that you certainly have not. Cooking under the stars and below freezing temps of Death Valley. 4K drone footage of one of the most insane monoliths on Earth. Driving in abandoned mines, cliffs, canyons, and wild times. Check it out. Team Age Productions on Facebook and YouTube. That's T-E-A-M-A-G-E Productions. Beautiful America. America.